Shalom Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. Uh, say shalom to my brothers and sisters that are online. Uh, shalom to the brothers and sisters here in the congregation. Uh, we are going to do start our uh, afternoon class, and the, the title is, They Were Trying to Tell Us. They Were Trying to Tell Us. Okay, so I'm going to go through this class kind of quick. I, got a, I have a lot here. Uh, Lord willing, I hope that it's uh, delineated pretty easy to follow. Because if you miss whatever I'm saying or whatever, you can always go back to the class. Lord willing, it's up there and it's done the right way. So, uh, but I'm going to move kind of fast because like I said, I have a lot that I want to bring out here. So, um, I want to get right, get right with it. Um, put up my first article, the first article, because what Deacon Malachi had brought out, he was bringing out the fact that we are at war. And being that, being that we are at war, that means there's all kinds of tactics that are being laid, that are being plotted, consulted. There's meetings on how to stop the nation of Israel, to stop us from getting back where we belong. That's what the whole point is about. And they'll attach any label, they'll come up with any plot, anything to stop the progress of Israel. They want to keep us separated from the Most High, and that's the diabolical people that we are under in our captivity because we broke the laws of God. But in our repentance, we seek to mend. We seek to mend our relationship with the Most High through the Son, Jesus the Christ, who died, whose whose blood was that atonement that allowed us to be gathered back unto Him. And because of that, our enemies are mad. They don't like this truth. They don't like. For us to be able to, uh, to, to repent and live like the righteous men and women of God. They want us to be in a club, hoochie mamas, uh, drug selling, committing crimes. That's what they want. But they hate to see us stand up like beautiful people of the Bible. Case in point, just real quick. Uh, I was watching Deacon Abiel's uh, Fix Your Face. It was two weeks ago, actually, not last night. Well, I saw it last night, too, but I'm referring to one that he did last, last week. And he made the point about um, that CNN, Caucasian News Network, Caucasian News Network, actually did a full art article on hearsay. Wasn't even confirmed. Hearsay. They, the bastion of news, CNN. Supposed to be like NBC and all of it. Like, these are the people you go to when you want your news. They went and did an article based on hearsay. But yet, here we were in, in uh, Detroit on Seven Mile. Everybody heard of Seven Mile. You got Eight Mile, you got Seven Mile. These are some rough areas all throughout Detroit. Well, that runs through D D Detroit. Here you had over 2,000 men in order showing the community a, a, an, an example of how we can be when we're organized. No news media touched it at all, as if we did not exist. But yet. They'll dedicate all kinds of editors and everybody else to put out an article on a on hearsay. But rather than to, you say you love us, you say you care about, it's supposed to be an unbiased media. Well, how come there was no media that said, you know what, black people are trying to do something for themselves. Let us at least feature them. They did not want no part of that at all because every bit of it is your enemies. And that's what we have to realize. We are not in the land of the love. We are in the land of our enemies. Um, so, understanding that, I'm going to make a point about some deception in media that's going on. Put up my first article. We got it right here. Show it on the screen. I want you all to look at this here because uh, what, when Deacon Malachi was making a point about how they are trying to set us up, that's real. That is really real. Turn off your phones. I'm hearing all kind of vibrations and all of that. Um, Deacon Malachi was making a point about um, 
about how we are trying to, how they're trying to set us up, okay? So, in this particular article here, put it up there, it says, anti-Semitism, anti-Semitic incidents hit a record high in 2021. What's behind the hate? What's behind the rise of the hate? Now, you can go through this article, but somewhere, some way, they're going to try to find something to tie back to what they call the black Hebrew Israelites, which is no such thing. Because if you subscribe to that false statement, you're basically saying that we're the black ones, but yet the white ones are still the Jews, are still the, still the right Jews. And you're just the converse that's allowed to come along with us. That's totally wrong. There's only one Jew on the planet Earth, and that's the 12 tribes of Israel. Everybody else is the nations. Okay, so that's the deal. So when we bring this truth out, some people might not like it. Okay, and being that they don't like it, as this truth begins to come out, some people are going to find out that they've been, perp they've been uh, uh, the victim of a hoax. So some people may be upset with finding out that they've been giving all of their money into a cause that has nothing to do with God. The Israelis, that's what I'm talking about. That has nothing to do with the Most High in terms of righteousness. So a lot of people are, they go, as this truth continues to come out, more and more people are going, to, are going to question why in the world are we pointing our fingers toward them rather than who the real Jews are and we've mistreated the real Jews. You feel me? Now some people might, might feel that. Some people might feel some, uh, some way about that. But I make that point because here's the point that I want to uh, make with that while I'm reading this. We're not a hate group, okay? We have to, we always point this in our, on our feet. We have to put this up there. And I say we have to because it's, it's really criminal to blame the victim of all kinds of violence. Just to me, if you tell, if you tell a person who's attacking you, stop attacking me, the attacker says you're a hate group because you, you, you're advocating hate for me to stop beating the shit out of you. That's basically what it is. That's, how, that's the diabolicalness that we are under, okay? We're not a hate group. Just because we tell the truth and you don't like the exposure doesn't make us an advocate of hate, okay? That's equivalent to you being the victim of a crime and you bring forth the evidence then that same criminal complains that the day of reckoning and judgment is closing in on them. But you're the hater because you want justice. That's the, that's the sick land that we're in. We're the victims of hate, and, and we have the Bible. The Bible is the evidence that we're bringing forward. As we bring the Bible forward, the evidence is here. They say, well, you're a hater because you're bringing forth evidence that exposes my lie. Therefore, you're a hate group. You're a hater. That's the sickness that we live in. Give me, give me Bible. Give me Bible. Time for Bible now. Give me uh, <laughs> Second Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians chapter, uh, what is it, two, three? Second, yeah, Second Thessalonians chapter two and verse uh, six, I think. Second Thessalonians chapter two and verse six. And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. So this is talking about the revelation of the wicked. The Most High said that the, that the nation of Israel had to, when you read the verses before this, he was saying that that day that we're looking for in our deliverance shall not come except, they come, except they're coming falling away first. And that man of sin must be revealed, the son of perdition, meaning the son of destruction. That's who he is. He's the son. Hey, can we put perdition up there? A lot of people, this word might not resonate with everybody. Perdition. Let's look up the word perdition real quick. Just stay right where you're at, Nishan. Everybody's doing right. Zoom in so we can see what it says. Okay. Uh, perdition. It says, in Christian, theolo in Christian theology, the state of eternal punishment and damnation into which a sinful and unpenitent, and un unpenitent person passes after death. So that's in Christianity, but perdition means destruction. Perdition means destruction. That's what it means. Find me the scripture when it says about perdition of all ungodly men real quick. Just so we can get the full definition out of the Bible about it. 
Okay, let's talk about destruction, okay? And that's why it says about the eighth head, it shall go into perdition. We're in that time period now. So there were seven heads, five are fallen, and one is, which was the Roman Empire. Then it says, and the next has not yet come, which was Britain. And then when Britain come, it shall continue a small space. And even, and then out of that, it says, and then there was an eighth head, which came of the seven, and it shall go into perdition. That's where we're at now. That eighth head is America, which is of the seven, and it shall go into destruction. They actually have the weapons to do exactly what the Bible says. They got the nuclear bombs built already. So we're in that time, okay? That's the time that the judge, that, that's also correlating with the book of Luke, where it says, uh, for the Israelites shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led in captivity under all nations. And then it says, and, and the Gentiles, it says that, um, um, and they which uh, somebody read real quick because I forget there's a middle piece in there. Uh, Luke twenty one twenty four. We're gonna read that again later on, but I just want to get these parts in because I'm talking about the perdition now. The perdition. I'm giving you the time periods in the Bible about when the perdition is going to begin. Read it twenty twenty one. You got it. The book of Luke 24. chapter twenty one verse twenty four. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. And the Israelites. This is when Christ. Came, Christ told us, said, listen, Jerusalem is about to be destroyed. Go ahead. He said, he, said, he told us to get out of there because the Romans was coming in to destroy Jerusalem. So, so what it say? This is what happened to the Israelites. And the Israelites shall fall by the, head, by the edge of the sword. And Go they ahead. shall fall by the edge of the sword. Come on. And shall be led away captive into all nations. And we went into slavery into all nations. That's the 12 tribes of Israel from the, the so-called Negroes, Hispanics, Indians. That's us. That ain't talking about these people you call Jews, these so-called white people. Christ called them the synagogue of Satan. We're going to read that too. That's why I'm going to move fast. I want to get all these points in. Go and, ahead. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. And Jerusalem shall be walked upon by Gentiles. Goyim. So you can understand. Or Goyim for you. For, Hebronic Hebrew brothers, but it's no problem. Means the nations. Read that again. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. And Jerusalem shall be walked upon, shall be occupied by the people that are not Jews. They shall be occupied by the heathen. Shall be occupied by the residue of the heathen. Literally, I'm quoting it. I'm quoting the scriptures now. The residue of the heathen is in our land. Straight up. That's what it's talking about. Read that statement again. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of and the Jerusalem Gentiles. Jerusalem shall be walked upon, occupied by the Edomites, the Idumeans. Go ahead. Until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Until the time of perdition. So you can understand. Until their time is up. Until their rulership is up. Till when the Most High said that is it. That when the bombs and Christ come back. That's when all that's going to end. Okay. You found that scripture with the perdition? Yes, sir. Read that. Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 7. But the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire. Fire from those nuclear bombs. Are y'all listening? Fire from those nuclear bombs. All of this is coming together. This is one beautiful book, the Bible. I love it. It said what? Read it again. Reserved unto fire. These kingdoms today are reserved unto for fire because they got the weapons that can do this now. Read. Against the day of judgment. Against the day of judgment. Here they're saying that we're a hate group and all that. We're bringing the truth out, and it's time for your judgment now. Time for your judgment. Time for your lies to be exposed. The hell is this? Read. Reserved unto fire against the day of judgment. Reserved unto fire against the day of judgment. Go and, ahead. And perdition of ungodly men. And destruction of ungodly men. That's what it's talking about. And the destruction of the enemy. That's why it says that in Wisdom of Solomon 18.7. Let's read that. That's what it's talking about. That's what the perdition is. Then we're going back to Thessalonians. Then we're going back to Thessalonians. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 18 and verse 7. Read. So of thy people was accepted both the salvation of the righteous. The salvation of the righteous, we accept that because we are the Jews. We are the real Jews. We are the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. And we accept that we're going to be saved if we keep God's commandments and endure. Go ahead. And destruction of the enemies. And destruction of ungodly men. And the destruction of the enemy and the perdition of ungodly men. We accept that. Okay. Go back to where we was at. 
Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians chapter two and verse six. Mm -hmm. And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. So the most high did not want to reveal during the time of Paul. That's the point. Because he needed to be, he needed to rule some more. That's why it says, he who now letteth will let. Let him continue. Don't bring it out yet. Y'all got to understand that this is talking about Esau. Don't bring, don't, don't reveal him yet because I still have more work for him. I need for him to get pompous. I need for him to claim that, I need for him to fully claim that he's my people. I need for him to blaspheme saying that he's Jews. I need for him to act like that he's Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I need him to completely destroy my people so that when I smash him, everybody will know that I am God and besides me there is no other God. But don't mess with him yet. Don't reveal him yet. I need him to continue. That's big. And what helped him to continue? The weapons that his father, meaning Jacob, gave him before he died on the bed when he blessed him with the, uh, with the weapons. When he said, give me that real quick so we can read it. So I can make sure I'm saying it right. Genesis uh, I think it's uh, 27, 30-something, 30 38. Genesis, listen to this. This is what's keeping them, this is what's keeping them afloat. Genesis. Genesis, Genesis chapter 27 and verse 40. No, and, 38. Ver, verse 38. And Esau said unto his father. And Esau said unto his father, come on. Has thou but one blessing, my father? Have thou but one blessing, my father? Jacob, Ble come on. Bless me. I e mean Isaac. Man, I got the names. I mean Isaac. Isaac was the father. Go ahead. Bless he had me. Already, he, because Jacob was going to get the blessing of being the firstborn of the Most High. So now he's, now he's getting ready to deal with Esau because he came late. Go ahead. Bless me, even me also, O oh my father. Mm -hmm. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. Read. And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. Thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. Give me that scripture where it says these two countries and these two nations shall be mine. That bastard, he went around and, 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 and claimed all the earth and think he's going to be, he's thinking he's going to be recognized as a power of God. He's the Edomite and he's going to pay for that. And I'm using the word bastard the right way because that's in the Bible. That's not hate speech. That's Bible. Give him, give him Bible. I'm giving you Bible now. You got it? The book of Revelation, chapter 11, verse 10. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another. Uh, not as many. Yeah, that don't sound like what? I forgot what I asked for. Uh, what did I just ask for? Ezekiel, Three, chapter 35, verse 10. Yes, that's what I want. Okay. Ezekiel 35 and 10. Ezekiel 35 and 10. Ezekiel, chapter 35 and verse 10. Because thou hast said, these two nations... And these two countries shall be mine. That's what we was just reading over in Genesis. Read that again. Because thou hast said, these two nations. Because nation Esau have said, because, hold, 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 hold. Did the Africans do this? Did the Arabs do this? Did the Chinese, did, no nation did what we're reading here. Read it again. Because thou hast said. Because Esau have said, because the Idumeans have said. These two nations. These two nations, meaning the land of Israel and the Americas, because this was called the promised lands. That's why Ronald Sanders put that name on that book. They knew that the Israelites was here. Go ahead. And these two countries. And these two countries. Shall be mine. And shall we, be mine. And we will possess it. And we will possess it. Whereas the Lord was there. Where, well, the 12 tribes of Israel was there. Did y'all see that? Now go back to Genesis. Genesis chapter 27 and verse 39. And Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. Thy dwelling, Esau, your dwelling shall be the fatness, the greatness of the earth. You're going to have the best places. You're going to have the top places. Your dwelling shall be the fatness, the greatest places on the earth. And that's what Esau did. He went and conquered all these areas. Go ahead. How did he do it? Listen. And of the dew of heaven. And of the dew of heaven, the great skies and all that. He get the best weather and all that. He takes everything. That's him. Go ahead. And of the dew of heaven from above. And by thy sword. And shall, by how is he going to get these places? And by thy sword shall thy live. By that sword, which is the mark of Cain, so you can understand. That's what it's saying there. That's, the re that's what that's saying. By the mark of Cain, he was able to take these places down. That's how he took Israel, and that's how he took America. That's how he took down the planet Earth. Because that mark of Cain. What is the mark of Cain? His ability to make weapons. Two bold Cain, so you can understand. 
That's how that works, okay? Because that's the same. Now, now go to Genesis. I'm jumping out of sequence just a second. Go to Genesis uh, 6 and 9, I think it is. No, no, no. Give me Genesis 4 and 12. Genesis 4 and 12. Genesis chapter 4 and verse 12. When thou tillest the ground. When thou, Esau, tillest the ground. It shall not henceforth. I'm going to go back over that later on in the lesson. It, it, the ground shall not yield for her increase to, to Cain. Go ahead. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. Because Cain and the children of Cain, which is Esau today, poison the earth. It's also going into that. Because they poison the earth. Go ahead. A fugitive and a vagabond shall thy be in a the earth. A fugitive and a vagabond shall Cain be in the earth, and Cain's children shall be in the earth. Why? Because he murdered his brother Abel. Read on. And Cain said unto the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. Cain said, look, with all these people looking for me, how in the world am I going to escape? My punishment is greater than I can bear. What can I use to keep these people off of me? Go ahead. Behold. Thou has driven me out this day from the face of the earth. Because the people were looking to kill him because of what he did. Give me that in Genesis. Uh, we coming back here. Hold that spot. Go to Genesis uh, 9 and 6. Genesis 9 and 6. Genesis chapter 9 and verse 6. six. Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. That's what happened when he killed Abel. A Abel's blood was crying to the Most High. Read it again. Whoso sheddeth man's blood. Whoso sheddeth man's blood, Adam's, I mean, uh, uh, Abel. Abel's blood was shed by Cain. He rose up and he killed him. Go ahead. By man shall his By the people. By man shall his blood be shed. By man shall his blood be shed. So what's, so we go back to Genesis now where we was reading about when he was complaining. Because that's the law. Everybody knew that. Adam made sure that everybody knew the law. So all of the people knew that that was the law. Go ahead. Genesis chapter 4, verse 13. And Cain said unto the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. My punishment is greater than I can bear. How in the world can I keep these people that got the law of justice? A fugitive running. The law of justice. All of the, 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 all of the advocates of justice is looking for him. And he said, how in the world am I going to keep these people off of me? Hold that. You stay there. Give me uh, Obadiah, second verse. Obadiah's second verse, that's why it says what it says here, because he's a, he's a vicious vermin that have robbed nations, and they all mad at him. You got me? I got it. Obadiah, verse 2. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. This is Edom. This is still the children of Esau. The first verse says, the vision of Obadiah, thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom. Read the second verse again. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. I have made you small, meaning nothing. That's what it means. Made you small in the eyes of real men. Go ahead. Thou art great, greatly despised. Thou art greatly despised because of the evil that they've done to the nations. Okay? Read on. The pride of thy heart have deceived thee. The pride meaning the blessing that he got. The pride of Esau's mind have deceived him, but God gave him that to keep the nations from killing him. Go ahead. Thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock. How in the world are you going to get past that? Thou that dwelleth in the caves. Thou that dwelleth in the Caucasus mountains. Read. Whose habitation is high. His high, his high mountains, they represent that now with them high buildings. Because that's all reminiscent of those caves. He ain't no way in the world he can get out of this. This is the indictment. The rap sheet is being brought forward. He, thus, you are guilty. Where's Lama's, Lama, Deacon Lava's hammer at? <laughs> Boom. Go ahead. <laughs> that saith in his heart. That saith in his mind. Who shall bring me down to the ground? That's what Esau thinks. He said, who shall discover our lies? Who's going to bring out the truth? We will terrorize people. Our people are terrorized. Our people know that, the, that these so-called white people are not Jews. They know that the Egyptians and the, and the Israelites are looking the same. Joseph and the Israelites that was there in Egypt, they know that these are black people. But why is it that they can't say anything? Because the so-called white man is a terrorist. That's why. And the brothers are scared to actually speak it. Here you have a brother. Here's a son that had come to his father. Said, Dad, can you show me what Jesus Christ looks like? The father might look at him and say, who in the hell have you been talking to? 
rather than showing him that he's rather than showing him what's in the Bible. That's fear. That's terror. That's what I'm talking about. Read that again. Yes, sir. Verse three. The pride of thy heart have deceived thee. Though thou Thou that dwelleth in the cliffs of the rock. Come on. Thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rocks, whose habitation is high. Read. That saith in his heart. That saith, that, that saith in his mind. Who shall bring me down to the ground? Because the blessing that Jacob, that uh, Isaac gave him, he's, really, he's living through that now. Because he conquered places with his weaponry. That's what gave him the pride to be over everybody. Read. Though, that, though thou exalt thyself as the eagle. That's his emblem, the bald eagle. That's another clue that's letting you know that this is talking about strictly him. Go ahead. And though thou set thy nest among the stars. Space travel. Who else is out there? Is the Negroes out there? Chinese out there? Puerto Ricans? <laughs> that's the white man. The Russians and the, and the Edomites, all the Edomites are those same people. Don't let it fool you. Oh, they're, they're Germans. And we're we are British. No, they're all the same. They're all, ca they're all Caucasians. They're all the same people. That's just their mothers and fathers that's over there in Europe. Uh, read, read on. Thence will I bring thee down. So when you set your nest up there, the Lord said, that's when your perdition is going to come down again. That's a, that's, so we're in that time right now. He's been, he's been coming down, and while that's happening, Israel is being on the rise. And that's the reason why he's going so hard at brothers when they're trying to bring this truth out because he knows he has but a short time. I'm quoting the scriptures now. He knows that. Okay? Go back to Genesis. What we was reading about, about, about the blessing. And then back to uh, where we was at before. You, you still got me right, Nishan? Yes, sir. Okay. The blessing, yes. Genesis chapter 27 and verse 39. And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling, dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. Your, your, your dwelling shall be in the best places on the earth. Go on. And of the dew of heaven from uh, above. Go ahead. And by thy sword. And by your weapons, which is the mark of Cain, shall you live, shall you survive, shall you be able to keep the people from killing you. That's, that's, how, that's how he was preserved to this day here. Because if he didn't have that, the minute he was discovered, he would have been wiped out. So when we read in Thessalonians, go back to Thessalonians again. Thank you, brothers. Go back to Thessalonians again. Now you understand why it's saying what it's saying, that he might be, uh, give me the, the fourth verse. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 4. I'm breaking it down. Come on. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all? That's that, that's that man of sin. That that man of sin may be revealed, the son of perdition. That was in the third verse, I think, right? Yes, sir. Read that. Read verse, that real quick. Verse 3. I got to move it. I got to keep on moving. Come on. Read. Let no man deceive you by any means. Go ahead. For that day shall not come, except there come a fallen away first. The nation of Israel had to go all the way down to slavery and lost everything. Lost our nationality, lost our name, lost our culture, lost everything. Lost our minds. Go ahead. And that man of sin. And be also, before that day that we were looking for to come, that man of sin had be to be what? Revealed. Had to be revealed. That's what the Bible's going to do. That's why they're so mad. Because this Bible's going to reveal him as the Satan that the Bible speaks of. Read. The son of perdition. The son of destruction. That's what it's talking about. The son of hell. That's him. Read. Who opposeth and exalteth Now himself. God is telling you who he is. He is the one that opposed God. Christ says, Christ got his description recorded in the Bible, but we're afraid to read it because we were terrorized by this man of sin. Read. Who opposes and exalts himself above. And he, ex he opposed what God says, and he exalts himself as if he's the people of God. Y'all hear this? Read. Above all, that is called God. Come on. Or that is worship. And he, is he not worshiped? Yes, because of the terrorism. Because the so-called white people terrorized us, terrorized the nations, terrorized us. That's what caused us to worship him. Go ahead. So that he is as God. So that he as God. Sitteth in the temple of God. Sitteth in the churches. Showing himself that he is God. Teaching you that he's about Jesus Christ. And you're going to learn anything about Jesus, you got to come to my churches. Read on. Remember ye not. That when I was yet with you, I told you these things. Don't you remember when I was yet with you, I told you these things? This is Christ speaking to us in the spirit. Read. And now, ye and know, now go ahead. Ye know what withholdeth 
that he might be revealed in his time. And now you know what was held back, that he might be revealed in the time that we're in right now. So the Most High did not want him revealed back then. He needed him to completely come out and be Satan. That's what he's demonstrating now, crystal clear, without a doubt. Go ahead. For the mystery of iniquity does already work. For the mystery, who is another? The mystery is who is this evil one that we're reading about? Who is this mystery? Who is this devil? Where is Babylon the Great? Mystery, Babylon the Great. Where is this place at? It's all talking about the same thing. People still today talk about something they don't know where it's at, and you're standing in it. Go ahead. Only he who now let it will Only let he, it. the Most High, who allows him to continue to rule. Go ahead. Until he be taken out of the way. It's time for him to be taken down now. That's what the Most High said. Until he be taken out of the way. Listen to this part. And then shall and then shall that wicked be revealed. And then shall that wicked be revealed. In other words, I don't want him revealed too early. I want him revealed now. Now the truth is starting to come out, and that's the reason why they're going crazy, trying to terrorize the basketball players, terrorize the rappers, terrorize our leaders, terrorize uh Brothers, terrorizing, this is terrorizing everything. You, there are a lot, there are, the, the truth is written in the books, history books, written in the Bible. You can read them. We can read now. Hmm. We actually read it and they say, although you see it, you better not say nothing about it. Because if you do, we're going to hit you with anti-Semitism, which is a made-up term, a trigger word to keep you repressed so you can't say anything. Basically have somebody occupying your house, and when you want your house back, they say you're anti-Semitic for asking for your house back. That's the sickness that we're dealing with. Y'all understand that? Yes, sir. Read on. And then shall that wicked be revealed. And then shall that wicked be revealed. Come on. Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. That's how he's going to be consumed with the Bible. The spirit of God's mouth is the Bible. The Most High is going to destroy the system with this Bible. Right. Because the lies are going to be destroyed. That's what's going to happen. This Bible is going to destroy all of these, these fake so-called Jews, mess, all that garbage. All these so-called white Christians and the, and the black people ain't nothing but niggas and all. All that garbage is going to get destroyed by the word of God. Read that statement again. Yes, sir. And then shall that wicked be revealed. Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. So the spirit of God's mouth is the Bible spoken by the prophets. Go ahead. And shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. And what's the, so when the, when the word of the Most High goes out to all of the edge of the world, like it says, and we say this gospel shall go throughout all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. That's the destruction that we read about here. Read that. And then. And, what and verse then you shall that wicked be revealed. And then shall that wicked be revealed, come on. Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. That's the teaching the Bible. And shall destroy. With that's the, the part that I want. And he and the most high shall destroy. With, with the brightness of his coming. With the missile warfare and the nuclear bombs, all of that's coming at the same time. The most high is coming with the weapons. That's why Isaiah says that. Give me that. Isaiah 13 and, and uh, 5. Isaiah 13 and 5. So I'm just bringing these points out to let you know where we're at. Then we go back to that article. That's the reason why that's going to happen. It ain't, it ain't because we're a hate group. It's because we're bringing out the truth. That's why I'm bringing all this out. You got it? Isaiah 13 and 5. Isaiah Read. chapter 13 and verse 5. They come from a far country. They, meaning the weapons of God. Go ahead. From the end of heaven. From the end of heaven, from the silos. Come on. Even the Lord. Even the Lord is coming with them. And the weapons of his indignation. And the weapons of God's indignation is that fire that the Bible is talking about that's going to burn this place up. Go ahead. To destroy the whole land. That's the waster. The, to, to destroy the whole land. So that's what the Most High is bringing. He's coming with those weapons. That's what it's saying. Now go back to Thessalonians. Now you understand why I'm saying that. So the Most High wants the word to go out first. Then he's going to back up the words. He's going to back up the prophets that's bringing this word out. You're going to find out that we're not niggas. You're going to find out that we're the, we're the men of God. You're going to learn it. You're learning that now. You better be careful of where you place your hands, too. Read. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed. And then shall that wicked be revealed. Read. Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. Go ahead. And shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. And he shall destroy 
with the brightness of his coming, the brightness is the missiles to destroy the whole land. That's perdition again. Read. Even him. Even who, him. Go ahead. Whose coming is after the working of Satan. That's the wicked that's being revealed, the so-called white man and the so-called Jews, because they're all the same people, the residue of the heathen, Idumians. Okay, that's enough of that. Now. So go back to this thing here. I'm just reading the title. I ain't even reading the article because somewhere, somewhere in it, it's definitely going to try to point out that, that, um, that we uh, have something to do with these incidents of, of hate and all of that when we're just bringing out the truth. There's a video to this thing, too. Click that. Click the video. Click the video. Listen up. Anti-Semitic Turn it up. Hit a Turn it up. Let's go. High last year in the United States. I didn't States. hear the beginning of it. William what did say? has more on what anti-Semitic incidents hit a record high last year in the United States. William Brangham has more on what's behind the rise in hate. Mm. Judy, the Anti-Defamation League, which tracks anti-Semitic behavior nationwide, found 2,717 incidents in 2021. That's a 34 percent increase from the year before. That averages to more than seven anti-Semitic incidents. Per day, Jonathan Greenblatt is the CEO of the. So Anti wait a minute now, League as as y'all listening to this, it says is, they they're basically documenting all this. But who's documenting the hatred against us? What organization do we have that documents this that it gets recognized? The Bible says that the that the that the Lord Christ said, "I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich." Tribulation. These people ain't in no damn tribulation. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> We're the ones in tribulation, scared to read the Bible out loud, scared to say that Christ is a black man. That's tribulation. These, these people can lie and live it up. What kind of, what kind of persecution are they going through with manufactured people, manufactured a nationality? They're all Edomites. You're the real Jews. You so-called Negroes and West Indian, Haitian, Puerto Ricans, Dominicans. You're the Israelites that the Bible speaks of, and they lied. Go ahead. Play on and author of the recent book, It Could Happen Here, Why America is Tipping from Hate to the Unthinkable and How We Can Stop It. Jonathan Greenblatt, good to have you back on the news hour. Uh, this report documents the most anti-Semitic attacks in the US since the ADL started recording these events back in the 1970s. Can you help us understand how should we interpret what you have found? Well, I think the data... You know what's amazing about this? i got to stop this here. What's amazing about this is that they put that word anti-Semitism up there as if it's an actual word. And they're actually going to have a discussion about something that they completely made up. Sem Semitism or Semite gets its name from Shem, which was the son of Noah. And out of Shem came many Semitic families. Let's read some of them. Give me that. Put that up there. I know I'm going out of sequence, but I'm going to just drop these things here. Look at this here. Semitic. Zoom in, in so the people can see it. I'm going out of sequence just a bit. Just a bit. Semitic. Of, relating to, or constituting a subfamily of the Afro-Asiatic. Uh, 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 ho, ho, ho. Uh, of the what? The Afro-Asiatic. Black people. <laughs> read it again. Of, relating to, or constituting. So Semitic means of, relating to, or constituting a subfamily of the what? Afro. Stop. Black people. So when the brothers say that I'm not, when, Ky when Kyrie and, and, um, and what's the other brother, Ye, and the rest of them, Ye, well, Ye, all the brothers, when they say that I am not anti-Semitic because I'm a Shemite myself, that's what he's talking about. This is, and that's another. That's the point that I'm saying. The brother Kyrie said, "Listen, I know how to read. I read the Oxford Dictionary on what Semitism." He that's what he was saying. And they saying we don't care. That's the terrorism I'm talking about. They were still talking about some. Are you Semi Are you anti-Semitic? What are you talking about? And we read. Here's the definition here. They said, we're sure to you, we'll put it up so you can read it, but you better not say it. I can't think of a better uh, term of terrorism that, that, that fits better than that. Here you have the affirmation, you read it, you point it out, you go into the Bible and read what you read, and then they say, although it's all there, you better not say nothing. That's terrorism. 
Understand that. Okay. So all of these people come out of Shem. That's where Shem So when you're talking about you anti, you got to be anti-Arabs. You got to be anti-Chinese because all of that come out. All of these people came, Moab came out of uh, Shem. Ammon came out of Shem. The Arabs came out of Shem. The people of, of Kentura, the Midianites, they come out of Shem. All those people come out of Shem. Our facts at all of them. All them people come out of Shem. They're talking about some anti-Semitic. They say, we give you the facts, but you better not say that. Here go black people. Here goes the doggone Negro sitting up on the white man's show talking about some Curry need to apologize for being anti-Semitic. Lord have mercy. Ah, God. The hell. Come on, man. Let me get back to my, get, get back to my thing before I go completely off my topic. Uh, <laughs> so I don't need to see this dude no more. Get him off the screen. Get him out of here. Uh, that's a bunch of hogwash and baloney anyway. Um, so the point that I want to make is that this is, um, like I said, to be like you saw on the screen, they said anti-Semitism is on the rise. I'm going to read this again. They said we're not a hate group. Just because we tell the truth, because that's what we're bringing out. We tell the truth, you, and, and you don't like the exposure that the truth brings. Doesn't that, that by, because we're bringing that information out, that does not make us an advocate of hate. We're just bringing the facts out. As we bring the facts out, let the chips fall where they may. But a person, who's, a person who has the truth, they're obligated to tell the truth. The person who has the truth has a moral responsibility. If not a spiritual, you got a spiritual responsibility, all responsibility, moral, spiritual, any way you want. When you have the truth, you're supposed to tell it. You're supposed to tell it. So that's what we're doing. And because of that, because you don't like it, you want to manufacture a label. So that, that, so that label of repression so that you can't say anything, that's terrorism. That's terrorism. Understand that. Now, despite the lies, despite the deception, despite the terrorism and repression, we're still going back home to Jerusalem. No matter what they try, we're still going back to Jerusalem. Give the Lord a hand for that thing, because I'm going to read about it. When the Lord blasts those, when the Lord blasts the residue of the heathen out of our land, we're going back home, brothers and sisters. We're going back to our homeland. So that's a good thing to know. But that doesn't mean that they're not going to try some extreme measures, as they've been doing and they will continue to do, to try their best to separate us from our power. Okay? So that's, I'm going to go into those things. All right? They sure did. They extremely tried to keep us down and out, and they will continue to do so until the Lord executes his plans, which is what he's doing right now. It was wonderful how Deacon Malachi was just bringing up a little bit of the information about how God works on the minds of men to cause them to withdraw them from their own purpose so that they get up on these cameras and say these things. And even though, and the Most High will use these brothers. Hopefully they repent, get themselves together. But the Most High is in the details. And as he causes that information to go out here, brothers and sisters are waking up. And the Most High's numbers are being sealed. And as they're being sealed, Esau is not going to know it. When that number is sealed, Christ is coming back to kick ass. And he's taking us out of here. But all praise to the most high for that. So, uh, they had a plan to keep us bewildered, keep us down, to keep us uh, um, in a stupor. And they call that, that's what Willie Lynch, and Willie Lynch is all so-called white people. I know it's an actual person in history. You got some of our people that try to say other things. I'm not going to even entertain the Negro and his shenanigans. Okay, because the reality of what you read in that information is what I see with my own eyes. Okay, so let's get that. Let's put that up here on the screen. Okay, let's put that up here on the screen. This is the book, the Willie Lynch uh, letter and the making of a slave. Okay. Let's open it up. Let's get the page that I asked for. Let's read. Come on with it. Yes, sir. Furthermore, we talked about paying particular attention to the female savage and her offspring orderly future planning. Then, more recently, we stated that 
by reversing the positions of the male and the female savages. Stop. Have the, have okay. They use the word savages, but that's, they're really referring to us. Have the have the roles of black men and black women been reversed? Yes. Crystal clear. You got women that's acting masculine, and you got men acting feminine, and that's exactly why a lot of the women are pissed off today. Some of the women are trying to find husbands, and too many of them got they walk like they got broken wrists. They act like they got a broken wrist, like this here. What the hell is this? No backbone, no nothing. Because this is what happened to us. Read. By reversing the positions of the male and the female savages, we had created an orbiting we cycle. We have created an orbit. Go ahead. That turns on its own axis. That turns on its own axis. In other words, we will begin to, we will begin to invest in this, in this indoctrination that turned us, turned men into women and turned women into men. And we will do it so often. We will forget that it was an outside force that caused us to do that. We will begin to self-perpetuate it. That's why it's using the word uh, on its own axis. We will regenerate it where they can stand back and say, look at them. Y'all understand that? Repression does that. Give me that definition, repression. Makes you forget where you're supposed to be. Repression. The act of using force to control a group of people and restrict their freedom. That's what we read, and that's what happened to us in slavery to this day. To this day, like my man said, to this day, to this day. You remember that, right? Go ahead. <laughs> Definition two, the act of controlling strong emotions. The act of controlling strong emotions. Brothers get mad when, when injustice has happened to their people. Sisters get mad when injustice has happened. We in the streets, we in there, we want justice. We trying to get justice for our people. But what do they use? Repression to do what? The act of controlling strong emotions and desires and not allowing them to be expressed. And not allowing them to be expressed. Do you know what that's like? To know of a truth and can't speak it? To know of where, where you are expecting justice and can't get it? That's repression. That's a word that we don't, that we don't look up. We don't mess with it too much. We don't really tackle that word a lot. You got to look at that word repression because that's exactly what it is. Pressed down. But you still, have the, you still have the desire to be free. But when you go to make your efforts to go free, repression stops you. That'll drive you insane. Go ahead. So that they no longer seem to exist. So that they no longer seem to exist. Wow. Look at that part there. What does it say? It says controlling strong emotions and desires and not allowing them to be expressed. You wanted freedom. You wanted justice, but they beat you down so much, you stopped asking for justice. You gave up. You don't even want freedom anymore. You don't even want to be liberated from your enemies anymore. I'm comfortably numb. You're defeated. That's what repression will do to you. Heavy deal, ain't it? Go back to where we was at in Willie Lynch. We, have we, yes, sir. We had created an orbiting cycle that turns on its own axis forever. On its own axis, we will perpetuate it ourselves because once we continue to see that we're not getting anywhere, we begin to justify nothingness. I want you to understand the psychology behind that. We begin to justify bullshit behavior. Excuse my French. We begin to justify mediocrity. We begin to justify not doing what we know we should do. Because we feel like we have no vision. We can't go nowhere. We might as well just sit and do nothing. So that's on its own axis. We begin to internalize that and accept that as the new norm. That's when it's on its own axis. It's a repetitive thing. We teach that same Negro normality to our own kids. Your child will grow up. He's not, he's not fully, he hasn't fully learned the racist system of this, set, of this setup yet. And he'll come to his father and say, Dad, I heard that the Jews are black. I heard that Jesus is black. He's not fully aware of the racism yet. But what comes out of the dad's mouth? Who, who you been talking to? Because he has to protect the boy. Because if my boy grows up 
and he goes out here not realizing that this vicious bastard will kill him, I better take that out of him. He can't be too militant. He can't be, he can't be seen as one that's rough and buck. That's why they're doing, that's why they did to these brothers. That's what they did to Ye. They say he's an uppity nigga. That's what they did to Nick Cannon. That's the same thing that these people practice what we're reading. Are y'all hearing me? That's what's happening. Read. Until this phenomenon occurred. Until what? Until this phenomenon occurred. Until what? Where you at? Okay, read that. Our experts, read it again. Yes, sir. Next sentence. Our experts Our warned experts us warned about us. the possibility of this phenomenon occur. I needed the part up above it. Yes, sir. Until this oh, phenomenon no, no, occurred. in the right place. I'm sorry. Read it again. Yes, sir. We had created an orbiting cycle that turns on its own axis forever until this phenomenon occurred. Until this phenomenon occurred. The phenomenon is this Bible. Go ahead. And reshifted the positions. And of that's what it's doing. It's, it's bringing women back to being women. It's bringing men back to being men. It's turning the things right side up. Because as Esau turned things upside down, this Bible is going to consume the lies and put things back in its proper perspective. Okay, that's the phenomenon, and they're worried about it. Even though brothers that come up and say certain things in the media, they're not 100% in this Bible, not even close, a lot of them. But they just know a little something that said that the Jews are black. They say something like that. They say, even with that, we got to smash it wholeheartedly because that could lead, that could be a conduit into them finding who they really are. So we can't even take a chance on that. Nip it now. That's how they think. Read. And reshifted the positions of the male and female savages. Mean to put it back, call us savages. Put us back in, a, in our proper uh, state. Read. Our experts warned us about the possibility of this phenomenon occurring. Go ahead. For they say the mind has a strong drive to correct and recorrect itself over a period of time. Did y'all hear this? This is the reason why Esau is always in your business. That's the reason why he always want to be in your meetings. That's why he's always want to be in your damn ear. That's he always want to come around you. What are y'all talking about? Because if y'all sit alone too long, somebody might say, you know what? Look at our situation. We need to do something about this. So he says, nope. And if he can't, if he can't go, he'll send an undercover brother. Undercover brother which was, was be what we call chocolate-covered white man, basically. He'd be sitting there and be, be, be trying to sabotage your very movements and reporting it back to his Lord. Read. If it can touch substantial original historical base. That's the problem. Her original, if it can touch substantial original historical base, which is the Bible. So your mind is trying to get back to the Bible. And once it makes that connection, that orbit is broken. That cycle is broken. So don't tell me that this is not a reality. I'm looking at it every day. This is how we live. Okay, so that's enough of that. I didn't need to read. I, need, I didn't need to read the rest of that. Now, so they're worried about this uh, phenomenon. Give me the tyrant. Give me my book. Give me my book. This is Puerto Rico, flame, The Flame of Resistance, you know. Uh, this book is very heavy. It's probably a lot of money now. When I bought it, it was $3.50. <laughs> I don't know what it is now. I ain't going to ask. Don't even look it up. Y'all can find that out on your own. <laughs> you know, but, uh, but again, it's one of those, that's a repression, you know. Uh, let's go inside the book. Let's read the page. Zoom in. I'm going to read it real quick. Well, go ahead. You got it? Yes, sir. Read. From the top. Yes. There is an old Latin American legend about a foreign tyrant who tried to bury the truth. This tyrant used arms to conquer another nation. He enslaved the people and forced them to work for his benefit. So let me, let, me, let me make this point. Whenever you seek to conquer another nation, there's something that you have to do as a conqueror. You need to know what made those people a sovereign people in the first place. You need to know what their strengths are. You need to know what their culture is, their language, their, their, their norms. You need, to know, you need to know their language. You need to know all of that in order to infiltrate them and then separate them and destroy them. You have to know all about them. You have to read books on them. You got to do all of that. Collect their history. What are their achievements? How do they live among each other? How do they treat their women? How do they, how do they deal with their sons and daughters? The, a conqueror needs to know all of those things. Go ahead. This tyrant had a ceaseless drive for more wealth and more power. Read. He was cruel and selfish. Go ahead. But he was not yet all-powerful 
Because the truth stood in his way. Because the truth of who these people really were stood in his way. He's an Ephraim, Ephraimite brothers writing this. Go ahead. The truth followed him everywhere and reveals his cruelty and his selfishness. What does it mean that the truth followed him everywhere? Because when he came up and as long as the people knew who they were and knew their history and all of that, when they see this vicious beast, they know they said, this is the devil. And they said, don't let him in your families. Don't let him into nothing. Keep him out. Keep him out of your congregations. Keep him out of your groups. Keep him out because he's a serpent. They understand that. Tyrant. That's why they call him a tyrant. Read. So the tyrant decided that it was absolutely necessary to bury the truth once and for all. Go ahead. Then he would seize all the wealth and power. The tyrant ordered the people to give up the truth. At gunpoint. Come on. He sent his soldiers into the land to gather the truth. Go ahead. Some so citizens this is all metaphorically speaking, but could you imagine what they was really doing? They was killing off fathers. They was killing off people like grandfathers and people that had the records. They had to get rid of a whole generation of people so that they could retrain the young. Go ahead. Some citizens refused to surrender what was rightfully theirs. What was rightfully theirs, our heritage. Go ahead. And they were shot or jailed. And they were, sh they were shot or jailed for resistant terrorism. Go ahead. When the soldiers returned, the tyrant stored the truth in his brain. So they finally collected it. And now they're reading it. They're reading all the records of these people. Go ahead. It like, made these, like these so-called Jews in their devilish synagogues. They're, they're reading our records, and they know that they're not the people. Go ahead. It made him dizzy. It made him dizzy. That's why these people are having a fit now, because they know this is not them. But they're going to perpetrate a fraud until Christ come back. Go ahead. Late one night, he crept into the jungle. When he was far away from the castle, he dug a deep hole in the ground. Mm -hmm. It was hard labor because he had never worked before. Read. The, then the tyrant cupped his hands around his mouth, and as loud as he could, he shouted the truth to the bottom of the dark hole. Read. The tyrant could hear the truth rumbling at the very bottom of the hole. But before the truth could escape, the tyrant threw earth into the hole as me, fast as he could. To bury it. He said, I don't want this truth to get out at all. Let me make a statement from this point here. What, when, they, when they came and conquered our people, they kept the records. That's why they have their libraries. But, you, but, but we've been educated or indoctrinated to not look in certain sections of the library. And some of them, frankly, just roped off where you just can't go. You got to have all kind of X, Y, Z credentials and all that. You understand? So if you get to digging into, into some of these areas, you got people, you can't be dumb to work in a library. They know. They say, wait a minute, why in the hell is he over here? And they make some phone calls. Because they say, how in the world did he get to know where to look at? That used to happen to me and Bishop all the time. We used to go in the Strands Bookstore in New York and go to the Judaical section. Said, what the hell are you niggas doing over here? Aren't you supposed to be in the African section? We said, no, our history is over here. Who learned you? That kind of thing. Y'all all right? <laughs> Read. He packed the earth down and stamped on it with his boots. Now, at last, the truth is buried forever. So here's the point. Now, when they say the truth is buried forever, it's not buried from them. It's buried from us. They're saying they don't want us to get it. That's the reason why it's such a problem with you learning. Then they gave you indoctrination and told you that it was education. When we're really being indoctrinated to be a slave wage earner. That's indoctrination. That is not education. There's a distinct difference between the two. So while they're indoctrinating us, what are they doing for themselves? They're looking and reading our records because they're saying, son, look, I'm going to die soon. I'm too old. I can't keep these wars going on. But you, my son, I have to teach you what not to teach them. I have to let you see these books and pass these books back among, among ourselves. You thought that the segregation in the classroom was because of your color? No. The segregation in the classroom was about because they needed to study you, they need to study you, and you can't be sitting in the same classroom with them. That's what it was about. I don't care what they say. You know, I, I, la, 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 whenever they try to, I, I, do the, I do the yay on them. La, 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 I don't give a damn. <laughs> you understand? But that, cause that's how they are. Read. He said, brushing the soil from his robes, he was very pleased with himself. He was pleased with himself because he knew the records of the people. Go ahead. 
On the journey back to the castle, he planned new wars of conquest. That's the part that I want to stop. This is a beautiful thing, y'all. If y'all get a chance, y'all should read this whole thing. I broke this down on another program on one of our shows before I forget which one. But I'm going to stop here on this because I want to get back into my lesson. Read that, that line again that you just read. Now at last the truth is buried forever, he said, brushing the soil from his robes. He was very pleased with himself. On the journey back to the castle. On the journey back to the to the castle, listen. He planned new wars of conquest. He planned new wars of conquest. In other words, I'm gonna put I got to plan some new wars to keep them down. Now when you read on, they they the, the truth came back up. And then they chase this tyrant out of their land. That's how this tale goes. I'll just speed it up. But this part here, I wanted to deal with the part about planning new wars of conquest. You know what that means? They, manu they manufacture these people called Jews to occupy our space. That's, that's, that's what's known as a new war of conquest. Follow me now. New wars of conquest. They manufacture Jews, so-called Jews, to occupy our space. And that's, and that's why Christ blasted them in the book of Revelation chapter 2, 9. Revelation chapter 2, 9 and 3, 9. Let's read them. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 9. Listen up. Revelations chapter 2 and verse 9. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. But the real Jews, because we are the people of God. It says, but thou art rich, the Israelites, because we are the, we are the people of the Most High. We're not rich in terms of the system, but we are rich because we are the people of God. We are the beloved of God. Read it again. I know thy works. God says he knows how hard we work. This is Christ speaking. I know how hard you work, Israel. Go ahead. And tribulation. And your trouble that you're in. You're, you're being terrorized and repressed. What are we reading? What time period is this? The time of Rome. Who was these so-called Jews? Herodians. Read it again. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty. And poverty. Because they robbed us. Go ahead. But thou art rich. But you are the Israelites. Go ahead. And I know the blasphemy now of them. Now he's swinging the pendulum the other way. And I also know the blasphemy. Go ahead. Of them. Of Herod's people. That's what he's talking about. Which say they are Jews. Which say they are Jews because they were converts. And are not. And they are, Christ is telling you straight that they are not the Jews. But are the synagogue of Satan. So if my Lord said that you're the devil that the Bible speaks of, I'm going to say the same damn thing. Right. They are the synagogue of Satan. Who's saying this? The Most High. Now, I can go a little deeper, but I want to move on. The people that Christ was talking about, they're saying that they were calling themselves Jews, that was the Herodians, okay? Give me Revelation 3, 9 now. Revelations chapter 3 and verse 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan. The same Herodians that's claiming to be Jews, go ahead. Which say they are Jews. This is crystal clear. Which say they are Jews, go ahead. And are not. Christ said they are not Jews. Go ahead. But do lie. But you're a bunch of damn liars. Who's saying this? Christ. Behold. Behold. I will make them to come and worship. I will make them that call themselves Jews because they're not Jews. I will make them come to the real Jews. Come on. And worship before thy feet. And make them bow down and worship before our feet. For putting your nasty hand on our Bible. Talking about you a Jew. That's what, who's saying this? Christ, the most high. And because we're bringing this truth out, you want to say we're anti-Semitic? No. We ain't talking about advocating no hate, no violence against anybody. But if the truth scares you behind, good. Because right. we're going to tell it. You all all right? Yes, sir. Read. Read that again. Well, it I, says, and to know that I, that's the part. So, uh, I will make them come to worship come on, before it. thy feet. I will make them to come and worship before our feet. And to know that I have loved thee. And for us to know that God really loves us. That's the world that Christ died for. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He gave that for you. That's what that's talking about. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so shall, so shall uh, the son of man. He's talking about us in Christ. So shall the son of man be lifted up. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish when the snakes was biting us in the wilderness with Moses. Who was there? Israelites. 
That's why I started off with said, and as. The same way that that happened during the time in Numbers, where the snakes was, was poisonous serpent was biting us. He said, the same way as Christ going to be the Savior for the nation of Israel. Now in the world, they're going to read the chapter. They're going to call it, they're going to read John 3.16 and take it out of the context of the chapter. And then they got the nerve to point their fingers and say that we're taking the Bible out of context. The blatant disrespect that they have for us, the blatant terrorism that they will speak to say that, the, the blatant insult to say that to us. You think these people are your friends. You better wake up. Romans 9. Romans 9, verse uh, 22. We're still talking about the beloved of God. Romans chapter 9 and verse 22. What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering, the vessels of wrath stop? The vessels of wrath is Esau. The Lord has said he's going to exercise his he's going to exercise his destructive power through Esau. That's Cain's seed again. What time period is this talking about? The time of perdition and destruction of the so-called white man. All of them, whether they're so-called Jews, Edomites, all of them. I do mean that's, that's all the same people, whether they call themselves Roman, French, German, Americans. They're all the same. Read. Endure with much long suffering. The vessels of wrath. God is enduring the vessels of wrath running around calling themselves Jews. God is enduring that because he got to let them be revealed in their time. Go ahead. Fit it to destruction. And who? what did God say? They were fitted to destruction. That's the reason why he was given that blessing to build weapons. Because those same weapons are going to be used to destroy him. The Most High is beautiful. He caused this man to build a weapon to his own destruction. Let me say that again. He caused a scientist to build a weapon that's going to annihilate his own butt. Right. God is awesome. Christ is awesome. Read. And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy. That's Isaiah 14 and 1. The vessels of God's mercy is the Israelites, Jacob. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob, and he will yet choose Israel. Go ahead. Which he had afore prepared unto glory. Which he had afore prepared unto glory. What is that telling you? If he had afore prepared Israel to glory, how in the world are you going to talk about Christianity where other people can just join in when he's telling you in the New Testament that I have already sanctioned Israel to be in glory. Glory is the kingdom of heaven. Which have afore sectioned out for glory. Read. Even us. Even who, us. Go ahead. Whom he have called, not of the Jews only. What is that talking about? Because he's not talking about just Judah. He's also talking about the 12 tribes that are scattered abroad. That's the Gentiles there. A lot of churches mess that up on purpose. Go ahead. But also of the Gentiles. Of also the Israelites that are calling themselves Gentiles. Give me that in Corinthians. Before anybody go to sleep. Corinthians where it says, ye were once. Let's just read that, read that one line and we can go back here. What is it, the 10th, uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 10 and 1 or 12 and 1? 12. Okay, read that. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 2. Ye know that ye were. What's the first verse say? 12 and 1, read. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 1. Now concerning sp spiritual gifts. Brethren, brethren, that's Paul's people, brethren. Paul was an Israelite from the tribe of Benjamin. He said, my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh who are Israelites. So that's the brethren that we read here, Israelites. Read it again. Now, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren. Read. I would not have you ignorant. I would not have you Israelites ignorant, ye my know, brothers. Go ye, ahead. Ye know that ye were Gentiles. Do you know that you were Gentiles? You were Gentiles. Because you were following the customs of the Greeks. That's why I was saying it that way. You were Gentiles. Go ahead. Carry away unto these dumb idols. So the, uh, the idols called, the idol worshiping that we were doing caused Judah to call the other tribes Gentiles. Y'all understand that? Now, let's go back to where we was at. Romans chapter 9 and verse 24. Yes. Even us. Whom, we, whom he have called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. Of the 12 tribes that are scattered abroad. He not only called Judah, but he called the 12 tribes, the rest of the tribes. Read. As he saith also in O.C. As he saith also in the book of Hosea. 
Go ahead. I will call them my people, which were not my people. I will call my I will call them my people, which were not my people. What is that talking about? They call us Negroes, Hispanics. But that's what it's talking about. We are not. They say that we are not the people of God at all. How is he numbered among the saints? Like it says in the Wisdom of Solomon, the fifth chapter. They don't say that we're the people of God at all. But the Lord said, no, you are my people. Read that again. As he saith also in O.C., mm -hmm. I will call them my people, which were not my people. Go ahead. And her beloved, which was not, my, not beloved. And I will call them my beloved, which were not my beloved. That's what Revelation 2 was talking about. Uh, Revelation, the third chapter, where it said, uh, and I will cause them to worship before thy feet. Revelation 3 and 9, that's what it says. And I will cause them to worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. You are my beloved. That's what the Lord is saying. Even though you Israelites that were scattered around calling yourselves all of these different nations, following idols and all of that, when you repent and clean yourselves up by these commandments, you are going to be my beloved. Even us, whom he has called not of Judah only, but also us the Israelites that were scattered abroad because Paul was the apostle for the quote-unquote Gentiles. That's what Cornelius was all about, the Israelites. Now, uh, so, so the question is, who are these so-called Jews? Who are they? They are the Idumeans from Herod's time. Give me the book of Matthew. Let's keep it, let's keep it moving. Matthew. Matthew 11, verse 7. Matthew. Chapter 11 and verse 7. And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitude concerning, concerning, con concerning John. Concerning John the Baptist. Read. What went ye out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind. A reed shaken with the wind? No, because John the Baptist was not no punk. Read. But what went ye out for to see? Go ahead. A man clothed in soft raiment. Behold. They that wear soft clothing are, are in king's houses. In other words, John the Baptist was about getting his work done. He ain't got time to sit around BSing. Read. But what went ye out for to see? A prophet? Yes. Go ahead. Yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. He was, John the Baptist was more than a prophet. John the Baptist paved the way for Christ. Read. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my message. So John the Baptist was no small type of guy. You got a knucklehead running around talking about something John the Baptist was not in the truth. That is the stupidest black shit I ever heard in my life. This, it said that Christ, well, it said that Christ, it said that John the Baptist was greater. Read, read that again. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Verse 10. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger, messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before which thee. Which shall prepare the way for Christ. Go ahead, read. Verily I say unto you. So now it's going to talk about John the Baptist. I'm, I'm still dealing with Revelation. I'm going to prove that these so-called Jews are the devils that the Bible speaks of. They're not Jews at all. By the Bible. I'm going to use the Bible. Read. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women. The among them that are born of women. There have not risen a greater than John the Baptist. There has not risen a greater man in the truth than John the Baptist. I can't believe the Negro said this. Go ahead. Notwithstanding. Notwithstanding. He that is least in the kingdom of heaven. He that is least within the kingdom of heaven. Is greater than he. That's how great the kingdom of heaven is going to be. John the Baptist was considered greater than everybody. But the smallest man in the kingdom is going to be greater than him. So what's that telling you about the kingdom? The kingdom is going to be awesome. Y'all all right? Where you at? Verse 12. Read. And from the days of John the Baptist. And from the days of John the Baptist when he came before Christ. Until now. Until the time that Christ is saying this. The kingdom of heaven suffered violence. The kingdom of heaven suffered violence. What's that part mean? That the Israelites are the kingdom of heaven when we repent and the Most High give us the power to rule this planet. You're the kingdom. Read that statement again. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. How in the world could the, king, the literal kingdom of heaven, if it's out in the sky, if uh, out of space, how in the world could that suffer violence? The Most High has got order out there in the heavens. The crazy, the chaotic madness is here on this earth. He says the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. So the kingdom of heaven is the Israelites. That's what it's talking about. Give me that in uh, John. You know what I'm talking about? Where the Pharisees demanded 1720 or something like that. Or Luke, I've, 
get them scriptures mixed up. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, that one. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come. You got it? Sir. Read. Tell them where you at. The book of Luke, chapter 17, verse 20. That's it. And when he was demanded and of the Pharisees. when Christ Pharise was demanded of the Pharisees, go ahead. When the kingdom of God shall come, he answered them and said. He answered the Israelites. He answered the Jews saying what? The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. You're not going to be looking for it like it's, uh, like it's away from you. Read. Neither shall they say, lo here or lo there. For behold. For behold. I want you to pay attention. That's what Jesus is saying. I want you to pay attention to my statement. Read. The kingdom of God is within you. So the kingdom of God is within the Israelites. So we just need power to establish it so you can understand. That's what Acts 1 and 6 was about. Give me that. Acts 1 and 6. Acts 1 and 6. Acts chapter 1 and verse 6. When they therefore were come together. When the Israelite, when the, when the disciples came together, the apostles, go ahead. They asked of him. They saying, asked of Jesus because he had came back. Go ahead. Saying, Lord, will thou at this time. Will thou, Christ, at this time, because you're back with us now. Restore again the kingdom of, to Israel. That's the day that we was talking about in Thessalonians. We were looking for that day then. That's why the Christ said, don't be deceived. It shall not come because the whole nation of Israel had to go completely down. And that devil, the white man, the man of sin has to be revealed. So I'm not coming to give you the kingdom yet. But that's not what we were thinking then. We were asking for that to be restored then. Read that again. Come on. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? So what were they asking for? They said, we want the power back to get these Romans out of here. That's what they were asking. We want our kingdom back. Y'all understand that? That's how that goes. Now, let's go back to uh, uh, where was that? Where was that? Uh, that was, that was, that was uh, Matthew 11 and 12. Yes, now, give me uh, Revelation 12 and 1. More proof. Revelation. These Herodians running around calling themselves Jews. Read. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. Let me break that down real quick. Uh, there's the precepts for this here. Uh, it says, uh, and there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun. The woman is the 12 tribes of Israel. That's, that's uh, Jeremiah Chapter 6, verse 2, it says that the Lord have compared the nation of Israel to a uh, comely, beautiful woman, something like that, right? Then it says, um, and the moon, and they say, and the moon under her feet. The moon that's under her feet is the law, the, the moon represents light, which the scriptures say that the, the, for the commandment is a lamp and the law is light. So the 12 tribes of Israel had this knowledge. That's what it's talking about. Y'all with me? Okay. What, what scripture? That's Proverbs 20, uh, 20, 623. Yes, six, Proverbs 623. That's the precept for the moon and the light, for the moon and the, uh, the sun and the moon. And then it said what? And upon her head a what? And, a, and upon her head a. And, a, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. Meaning the 12 tribes of Israel was in Jerusalem. That's why it says, and there appeared a great wonder in our heaven. The same heaven that the Romans took by force with violence. That's why when you open up the New Testament, it's mentioning Caesar. It's mentioning Caesars and Herods and all because they had occupying our land with us in there. That's what's happening. Read. And she being with child. Cried. And she, the nation of Israel, the Israelites being with child. What were we trying to do? We was trying to bring Christ to be born. Go ahead. Cry. Travailing in birth. Travailing in birth because the edict went out to kill Jesus. It but we were trying to hide him. And they were persecuted, killing our babies. Two years and under. Read. And pain to be delivered. And pain to be delivered. We're trying to get Christ to an area where we can have birth and protect him. So that the enemy don't kill him. So that the white man don't kill him. Go ahead. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Now listen to this other wonder that appeared in our heaven, in our kingdom. And behold, a great red dragon. So-called white people, eat them, Having seven heads. Seven heads. Greeks, Rome, Spain, France, Germany, Russia, and Britain. Those are the seven heads. And out of that seventh head came an eighth head, which is America. That's where we're at now. 
These seven heads are all red people. That's why it's using the color red there. Because that's Esau. A great red dragon. Read. And ten horns. And ten horns. Ten common markets. E E E. What is it? EU. The EU. The, ec the uh, economic union. Read. And seven crowns upon his head. Seven different rulers among this beast. I just named them for you. Read on. And his tail drew the third part of the stars That's of heaven. The third part of the stars of heaven was the tribes that was left in Jerusalem when Jerusalem, after Jerusalem was being deceived, while it was about to be uh, besieged, because the other tribes had already scattered abroad during the time of uh, after, after Babylon, when, when, uh, when Cyrus, the king, allowed Israel to go back and build. And a lot of us, when you read the Apocrypha, so you can understand, Second Ezra chapter 13, verse 40 on down, it says that they took this counsel among themselves, that they would go to a land where no man dwelt before. That's when they came over here, the so-called Indians. That's what it's talking about. So what tribes was left in Jerusalem? Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, and stragglers of the other tribes. But all of them did not go. Some of them stayed in Jerusalem. Okay? So that's why it says the fourth part of the stars of heaven. Read. In his tail drew the third part of the stars Meaning of heaven. Meaning put them in captivity and destroyed our people. That's what it's talking about. The conquest. When they destroyed us in 70 AD. That's what it's talking about. Read. And did cast them to the earth. That's what it cast us to the earth. Destroyed us. Go ahead. And the dragon stood before the woman. So which, it's going back and forth in history now. And the dragon stood before the woman. Go ahead. Which was ready to be delivered. Looking for Jesus Christ. For to to devour her child as soon for as it was born. For to devour her child. What's the child that they were looking to devour? Christ. Who was doing this? It's going to tell you flat out who was doing this. Read that again. For to devour her child as soon as it was born. So who was looking to kill this baby? We're going to read about it. Give me the book of Matthew. What verse are you in? That was, I'm on verse 5. Okay. Give me uh, Matthew 2, 2, uh, 13. 2.13, Matthew 2.13. This is the history that backs up this parable here. Matthew chapter 2 and verse 13. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt. Joseph, you are to take the young child Jesus and his mother Mary and flee into black people. Flee into a black land. You ain't taking no white baby down in no damn Egypt and hiding nothing. You see what I'm talking about? They got the nerve to lie and dare you to speak the truth. How in the world are you going to hide a, a so-called white cabbage patch baby in Egypt? Read. And be thou there. And be thou there. Listen. Until I bring thee word. For Herod will. For who? Herod. For who? Herod. Herod. Will seek the young child to destroy For him. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Who was Herod? I, I don't want to do it, but I got to do it. Herod was an Idumean. That's in the, in the history books. Can we pull up some of the stuff that I showed yesterday? Herod. Give me the book, Jewish Civilization. I'm going to run through this. Okay, well, that's good. We can just deal, let's deal with this one. Herod. Show it on the screen. Herod. King of the Jews and friend of the Romans. So we're going to find out about this Herod. Who is he? It's said by Peter Richardson. Open up the book. Read the top and then drop down to the bottom. Page 54. Herod was an Idumean. Read. But his family origins lay in the desert in the tribe of Edom. Do you all see this? That's the white man that's in Jerusalem calling himself a Jew. He's a damn Edomite. He's an Idumean. Now drop down to the bottom. Let's get these so-called Jewish. Then I need to call them what the Bible says, a bunch of bastards that's in our land. Yes, sir. Read that. Josephus speaks of his conquering the Idumeans and forcing their conversion to Judaism. Did you see that? They were forced into Judaism. That's when they became Jews, these so-called white people. What, what did they say? Idumians. Idumians. Look at that whole paragraph. Idumians. It said, but John Hycranus, that was the group that forced them to become Jews. Okay? And it says, uh, Josephus speaks of this conquering 
the Idumeans and forcing them and forcing their conversion to Judaism. That's how they became Jews. So they are not Jews by birth. Okay, now go back to the top of the book. That's why it says what it says there. Herod was an Idumean. Now let's go back to the Bible. Yes, sir. Matthew chapter 2 and verse 13. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt. And flee into Egypt where black people are. So white people was in our land looking for our black Christ to kill him. Go get me my other book, Je uh, Jewish Civilization. Jewish Civilization. Picture history of Jewish civilization. This is not this is not a comic book. This is archaeology that we're looking at. You don't find these books just laying around somewhere. Uh, flip the next page. Hold on. No, no, I don't want this. No, I don't want that yet. Give me those, some other pictures. That's coming up later. Give me that. The next one. Next one. Next one. There's something I'm looking for. Next one. Uh, no, 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 no. What am I looking for? What am I looking for? I forgot. The, the story, right, the mother pictures that we show, right, the Herod and all of that. Brother, show me the whole book. Show me my pictures and the things so I can pick the picture. Right, that's what I'm talking about. Zoom in. Let's go through, let's go through, hold it, look at the title. The House of Herod. Now, jump down. The Roman, and I'm only going to read the highlighted parts. The Roman legions first trod on the soil of Palestine. Palestine is talking about Israel. On, uh, uh, in 63 before Christian era, so you can understand. So they was occupying when Christ was born. They was already occupying our land. That's why we were complaining. That's what, Ro that's what Revelation was saying. And another, was saying. and another wonder in our heaven. They came in. That's what we're reading. You all see this? Okay, uh, so it said the Roman legions first trod on the soil of Palestine in 63 before Christian era. Give me my next part. What's, what's down at the bottom? Antipater, the, the Idumean. Idumean. So keep those words in mind. Antipater and the Idumean. The Idumean. Give me my next part. I'm just running through this quick. What does it say at the top? In 47 BCE, Antipater's son, So Herod, it's coming up closer. It's coming up close. It has 63. Now we're at 47 before Christian era. Come on. Getting closer to the time of Christ. Read. What does it say? Antipater's son, Herod. Who? Antipater's son, Herod. Herod. Was appointed governor of Galilee. Do y'all see this? That's how he became king of the Jews. And this is a dynasty, so it was many Herods. But the Herodians were the ones that was calling themselves Jews because they were converted to Judaism. Y'all see that? Okay, give me my next piece. Down at the bottom. Agrippa. The, the grandson of Herod. Of Herod again. Flip the next page. I'm just letting you see the Herod. What? The, the Idumean. Idumean. So that's the great red dragon. The so-called white man. In our heaven. Now, go back to the Bible. <laughs> yes. Revelations chapter No, no, no. Give me Acts. Let's prove it some more. Give me Acts 13. Acts 13 and 1. Let me read this, then we go back to that. Acts 13 and 1. Acts chapter 13. Now you understand why it's using this language, what, what we're about to read. Because they were converted to Judaism. Read that. Acts chapter 13 and verse 1. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon. All these are Israelites, black people. Go ahead. That was called nigger. That was called nigger. Black. That's what they were called. They were called black men. Go ahead. And Lucia, Lucius and Cyrene and Manian. Go ahead. Which had been brought up with Herod. Which had been what? Brought up with Herod. Brought up with Herod because Herod was learning how to be a Jew. So they was brought up together because they were converts. Did y'all see this? Did y'all see this? Yes, sir. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now, let's go back to Revelation. Now you understand why it said in Revelation 2, 9 and 3, 9. Let's read 2, 9 and 3, 9 again. Revelation 2, 9 and 3, 9. Revelations chapter 2. And give verse me the yeah, let me speed it up. 
Revelation 3 9. Let's just read because it says nearly the same thing. I can read two of one. Read. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan. I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, Herod's people. Which the sa- great red dragon is making it crystal clear. Go ahead. Which say they are Jews. Which say they are Jews. And are not. Christ is telling you that they're not the Jews. They are converts. But do lie. But they do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Then I'm going to let the world know that you're the real Jews and I love you. That's what he's saying. I love you, not them. I love you. That's what the Lord is saying. Y'all see this? Yes, sir. Now, go back to uh, Revelation 12. Let's finish that up. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 5. And she brought forth a man child. And so we end up having Christ anyway. We, we evaded the Romans. So we was able to have him. Go ahead. Who was to rule all nations. That's why they wanted him killed because they did not want Christ to rule. They did not want Israel to rule. They did not want us to get our kingdom back. Read. Who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Who was to rule all nations with a pipe. The bus heads open when they don't want to obey the word of the Most High. Go ahead. And her child was caught up. And her child, meaning Jesus, go ahead. Caught up unto God and to his throne. Meaning the transfiguration when he went up. So who are we reading about? Jesus the Christ. Who was looking to kill him? Herod. What was Herod? Uh, Idumean, an right. Edomite. Right. Go back to Go back to my book. Give me the page where it says who these people are. To make it even more. There's a, there's a page, 96. Let's go back to the book. Move it, move the pictures. Maybe you don't have it. You might have to look for it. Nope, nope, not that. The Jewish civilization, hit those pages, because there's another page in there that I want to read about Esau. Maybe y'all don't have it. Lord have mercy. No, it's not those. Look on the, no, 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 y'all didn't put it up. Y'all didn't put it up. Y'all didn't put it up. It's none of these, none of these. Y'all, y'all went through that already. I know I'm asking for it at the last bit. I didn't, I didn't tell you all about it. Um, it says the children of Esau roam. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for that page. Okay, we well, all going to find it. Let's continue on with this here. So uh, go back to Revelation 12. Continue Revelation, reading on this, Sean. Revelation chapter 12. You want verse 5 again? Bishop? Yes, sir. Verse 5. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness. And the Israelites fled into the wilderness. Go ahead. So that wilderness was after 70 AD, so you can understand, when Jerusalem was sacked. When they came, when they tried and they really came in to destroy Jerusalem, we had to flee into wilderness. That's what Luke was talking about. That's what Christ said to us in the book of Luke. That's what it was saying. He says, and when you shall see Jerusalem surrounded with the Roman armies, then know that the destruction is near, that where Jerusalem is going to be destroyed. And he said, for you to flee, meaning Israel, to flee into the wilderness. Okay? He said, flee to the mountains. That's the word it used there. The mountains is the wilderness, what we're reading here. You found the part? All praise to the Lord. Read that. Yes, sir. Yeah, my, my boys is on point. Jump down to where it says he. He sets a prophet of his choice. This is in the same book. Over them who will conquer the land of Israel for them. And they will come and restore it to the Jews. The real Jews. <laughs> Go ahead. And there will be a great hatred between them and the children of Esau. Who's the children of Esau? Rome. Rome. So the Idumeans is the Romans. That's the so-called white people. The red dragon that was occupying our land. That's the same ones that Christ cursed out when he said that you are not the Jews. You are the synagogue of Satan and you do lie. You're a liar. And I will make my people, you're going to bow down before them. And then everybody's going to know that I love the real Jews, the 12 tribes of Israel. Right. That's what we're reading. So when they're attacking Kerr, what's his name, Kiri, Kiri, Kyrie, Kyrie, Irving, Irvin, and they're attacking, what's the other brother? Yay. And attack, is it, yeah, yay, these brothers, they're attacking them because they don't want them to know what we just read. They don't want them to come nowhere near the orbit of this Bible. Right. 
Hmm, put it like that. They don't want them to come nowhere near anything like this at all. Imagine them with all that, with, with a microphone and knowing this. Oh, man, it's over. Nine times many rhymes. You know what it is. Boom. We're going to get into that thing, too, as we roll it. Uh, read on down in Revelation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, brothers. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 6. And the woman fled into the wilderness. Go ahead. Where she have a place prepared of God. That place is the United States of America. That's what that place is. And I, that place is the, there's not only America, but the captivity is where we went. And it said that, read it again, read it again. Don't, don't read the whole thing. Just read what I'm, what I'm, what I'm talking about. Yes, sir. Uh, where she have a place prepared right. of God. So we fled into the wilderness, and the Lord said, where she has a place prepared of God. Go ahead. That they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. That they shall feed them three and a half. That's what the... Two, what it says, how many times would it say uh, they should feed them? What, what was the number that it should gave? Should feed her there 1,200. 1,200 is 1,200. And three score days. And three score is 60. So 300, uh, said 1,260 days. That represents three and a half years. Go to Revelation 11 and 8. Revelations chapter 11 and verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom in Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. They lied about Jesus Christ over here. That's why. So this spiritual Sodom and spiritual Egypt is America and the rest of our captivity. But it's mainly here. That's what it's talking about. This is the valley of the dry bones. That's where we're at. Malcolm told you that. Now, give me the 11th verse. Verse 11. And after three days and a half. The same dry bones, the same, the, the same destroyed brothers and sisters that's in captivity. And after what? Three days and a half. In other words, 1,200 and, 1260 days. That's the three and a half there. That's the 42 months, so you can understand. The same scripture. That's also the time and the times and the dividing of times in Daniels. It's all talking about the same time period. What was going to be happening in this time period? We was going to be fed by Satan. Go, go uh, back to where you was reading. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 6. And the woman fled into and the, the woman and the woman fled into the wilderness. The Israelites fled into the wilderness, come on. Where she have a place prepared of God. Where she has a place prepared of the most high. That they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. We're gonna read more, more, what, more, what this is really talking about, that they shall feed her with in this time frame. Go to Deuteronomy 24, no, 28. No, 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 I want to save that. I want to save that for another part of the scripture. Because it's called, give me the 14th verse. Give me verse 14 because it's saying the same thing. It's repeating it in verse 14. Revelation 12 and 14. Yes, sir. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 14. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle. So it's reiterating what we just read in the verse before. Everybody's with me? Read it again. And to the woman. And to the Israelites. Were given two wings of a great eagle. That she mm -hmm. might fly into the wilderness. That's what we just read in the earlier verse, that she might escape from Rome when they were coming to kill us, where, where it says that many of us fell by the edge of the sword of the Romans. Many of us escaped that because the Most High allowed us to escape because Jerusalem was going to be destroyed until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. That's what that's talking about. Read. Into her place. And into her place, meaning where we are in our captivities, right here. For, which is America. Where she is nourished for a time. Where she is nourished for a time, listen. And times. And times, that's that three and a half again. And a half a time. And a half a time. Do y'all see the numbers connecting? Yes. For a, for what? For a time. For a time. For a times. Time, and, and times, so that's one plus two is three. Go ahead. And a half a time. And a half of time. Give me Daniel 7.25. Daniel 7, 25. Daniel chapter 7 and verse 25. And, and he shall speak great words against the Most High. Come on. And shall wear out the saints of the Most High. And think to change times and laws. Go ahead. And, and this they is the shall last be kingdom. That's the fourth kingdom that we're reading about. Go ahead. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. The same time period. Okay, now give me Deuteronomy 28, 48. So he said, 
So what we just read here, read that verse again uh, back to Revelation. Then I need Deuteronomy. Then I'm going to get back on track. Chapter 12 and verse 14. Yes. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, and to her place. Go ahead. Where she is nourished. Where she is, that's the part I want. Where she is nourished. Where she is fed. Where she is nourished. We, when we came over here, we got to depend on these people. Give me Deuteronomy. Where she is nourished. Go ahead. Deuteronomy 28. We're coming back to this because we got to read another word in there. Deuteronomy 28, 48. Listen. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 48. Therefore shall thy serve thy enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. That's what happened to the 12 tribes of Israel. Come on. In hunger and in thirst and in nakedness. Be and fed by the, that's what it's talking about there. We shall serve him for to be fed in our hunger, food, clothing, everything. That's what it means when it says that be fed. Read that statement again. Therefore shall I serve thy enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger and in thirst. So and our in enemies are these white people, are these Romans. Go ahead. These Edomites. Go ahead. And in nakedness. And in nakedness. So in our hunger and our thirst and nakedness, we had to serve this man. Go ahead. And in want of all things, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. God is telling you who he's talking about. The yoke of iron was placed upon us. Okay. Until he have destroyed Until thee. he have destroyed us. Until we don't even want freedom anymore. That's what we was reading about repression. He will repress you so much that you won't even try to get out of it. We will act like it's on our own axis. That's how, connect, that's how these scriptures connect. Until he have destroyed us so bad that we don't even want freedom. Who did that happen to? Only us. That's our people. You're the Jews. Now, go back to Revelation 12, 14. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 14. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that, the, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time. In times, in a half a time. That's the 350 years again, the 3.5, so you can understand, okay? Basically, so when we came over here on the slave ships, from the time we got here up to the time where we're at now, this is the time period that what we're reading about. Go ahead. From the face of the serpent. Who's feeding us? From the face of the serpent. The serpent is feeding us. The white man is the devil that the Bible speaks of. It's telling you who's feeding us. From the face of the serpent, the devil is feeding us. We're getting our food, clothing, and help, and all that from, our, from the devil. That's beautiful. That's crystal clear. Now, give me, go uh, back to Revelation. Give me the uh, 10th verse. The 10th verse. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 10. This is after Satan has kicked, this is after Satan loses his rulership. This is what this is, is going to talk about. It's going to talk about. What's going to go down before he actually loses it all? Read it. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven. This is after he's taken down. Now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. That's when the white man is going to go into perdition. He's destroyed. That's what we're reading here. The ninth verse is him being cast out. Go ahead. For the accuser of our brethren. That's the word that I want for the accuser. Now it's going to tell you about this man that ruled over us. For the what? For the accuser of our brethren is cast down. Which Who is the accusers? The so-called white man. The so-called Jews. They're the accusers. The synagogue of Satan. That's what it's talking about. Read that again. And For don't get me wrong, because they're no different from the rest of the so-called white people. So nobody can't say to somebody, and hey, this is really ridiculous. They, act, they really act like they're different from the rest of the so-called white people. They're all the same. Oh, huh, we're Jewish. No. You're Edomite. Right. You're not Dumian. You're Roman. Right. Read. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Did y'all hear that? They accuse us day and night. How do they accuse us? By setting us up. By trying to destroy us. I'm going to go through some of that stuff there. They accuse the real Jews in their synagogues, in the synagogue of Satan, by keeping in place that we never return to the Most High. That's what they're praying for when they go in there, that the real Jews never wake up. That's what that's talking about, that they never wake up. Psalms 83, let's prove it. Psalms 83, let's prove it. Psalms chapter 83, verse 3. Verse 3. 
They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. They, the nations, the, the Edomites, Idumeans. Jump down to verse 5. So let's read verse so we can find out exactly. Because it's naming all the nations, but I just want one. Yes, sir. I, I'm Bishop. being picky today. Verse 5. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. They, all of the nations, are confederate against us. They're in unity to destroy the 12 tribes of Israel. Read. The tabernacles of Edom. Did y'all see that? The tabernacles of the white man. The tabernacles of Rome. The tabernacles of Edom. I do mean they're all the same people. They are the ones that's against us. Now, read the third verse. Verse 3. To, so they, we can pop, put the proper label on them. Verse 3. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. They, the Edomites have taken, and all the nations, but I'm, speci I'm specifying Edom, because Edom and Idumea is the ones that's accusing us day and night to the Father. So look how we got your people. They, they're out here twerking. They're, they're selling dope. They're shooting each other. That's what they're talking about. They're not keeping the laws of God. Look at them. You, are you going to say that these are your people? No. That's how they deal with us. And they know they're not the Jews. They know that you're the real Jews. Read. They have taken crafty counsel. They have taken crafty counsel. You know what it took to set up the system where we are in it and we began to, we began to take on the, this, this, the, uh, the destructive practices and we, practice, and we practice it as if it is our innate spirit. We actually think that this is our culture to act like this. That's how far, that's how far the damage went. Read. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. And they have consulted against our, the, hid, the hidden ones. Wait a minute. The, the Bible says that these are the Israelites and they are hidden. Meaning that who knows the real Jews? Who knows where they're at? Give me uh, this Deuteronomy 20 where it says I will cause the remembrance of them. 26 and... I'm not my script is it? Yes. No, no, no. It's in another, it's in another part of the. Yeah, I will cause the remembrance of them to cease. That's in Leviticus or something, right? Y'all got it? Yes, sir. That's it. Leviticus twenty six. Read that. We talking about the hidden ones now. Listen to this here. You want to talk about these are so these are Jews. I really got to get through this lesson. Come on. The book. Leviticus chapter 26 and verse 14. But if ye will not. No, that's not it. I will cause, I will scatter them into corners. That one. Where's that one at? Deuteronomy 32 what? 30, 32, 26. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 26. I said, I will scatter them into corners. Listen to this here. I will scatter the Israelites, the true Jews, into corners. When you, when, when, when you hide something in a corner and you got company coming over, what do you sweep? The, well, we don't really do that, but you get, the, you get the analogy. They sweep the dust and the stuff in the corner so that the people can't see it. Hidden. Read. I said, I will scatter them into corners. I will make the remembrance of them. I will make the remembrance of the real Jews. Of them to cease from among men. So that means that nobody's going to really point to the real Jews and say you're the Jews. That's crystal clear. Nobody's going to really say these are the Jews. Now. Where was the other scripture that I was talking about? We was in Psalms. Let's go back to Psalms. Psalms chapter 83 in verse 4. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. Go ahead. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Why? Because they have consulted against the hidden people of God. So our nationality is a mystery. It's hidden. That's not these people that you call Jews. They are imposters. Straight up. They are imposters. Imposters. Now, Isaiah. Isaiah 1 and 3. Let's move on. Isaiah 1 and 3. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 3. The ox knows of his owner. God the says that the ox knows his owner. And the ass his master's crib. And the jackass knows where his land is at. Go but, ahead. But Israel does not know. But the true Israelites do not know that they're the Israelites. And know that they don't know where their land is at. 
They don't know anything about themselves because the tyrant have taken our enemy, have taken our information from us and lied to us. But the tyrants are reading our records backwards and forwards to each other, but they won't allow you to be taught that in school. Go ahead. It my, what? My people does not consider. My people does not even consider. Why is it talking about they don't consider? Because the repression made us stop even asking. Goes back to the repression again. We don't even ask anymore because the repression on us was so great, we gave up. We don't even care. We don't even consider. Who does that fit? The, the 12 tribes of Israel. That's right. us. That's us. Crystal clear. They know what they did to us. They know the punishment that they're going to get for doing what they did to us. It gets worse. When an enemy looks to conquer a nation, they must learn everything about that nation. Take away, take away that very thing that united them in the first place is what I was saying before. They remove it, then they replace it with something that's close to what they actually belong to. They'll give you the Bible, but they will lie on it. Because they know that we're spiritually connected to it. So they say we can't just take it from them. We can't just take it from them completely. We got to give it to them, but we got to lie about it. Put a white man in the middle of them to make sure that none of them become a yay. That none of them become a, a Ky Kyrie Irving. To make sure that none of them become a Nick Cannon or Professor Griff. I went over, I went over people's head with that one. Pu uh, Professor Griff used to be with Public Enemy. And I say used to because there was some riffraff that happened a while back, but I'll talk about that later on. When I get into they tried to tell us. I'm going to get ready to open that up now. Get ready to open that up a little bit. But what I'm saying is that they wanted to replace it with something that's very close to what actually belongs to us. They said, well, we'll give them that Bible, but we will lie on it. That's how they got us to celebrate Christmas. Y'all got to really understand how deep this thing goes. They got us to, because you think you're celebrating about Jesus. You somehow, they, and they put Jesus in it. They put a bunny rabbit and tell you that that's about Passover. That's how they get us to celebrate pagan holidays. So they, that's slick rape of our minds. That's what they did. So basically, what I'm saying, they lie to us. And that's what Christianity is all about. And that's the reason why it's so popular among our people, because we think that we're worshiping God. We think that we have some connection to God. When in reality, the Christian churches are more like precincts to make sure that we stay asleep. Let me say that again. These churches are more like enemy precincts that's placed in our, placed in our communities to make sure that we stay asleep. And the preacher is the captain of the precinct. <laughs> Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. That's what these churches really are. They make sure that we stay asleep. You will bring to the preacher, say, listen, I read about Jesus. They said, we got to call the sergeant. <laughs> because it's not about waking you up. Just throwing that, throwing that out at you. This is still true today. What I'm about to read is getting ready to shock you. Dred Scott versus Sanford. Some of y'all may have heard about this. Some of y'all may be shocked by what I'm about to read. Some of you might have your feelings hurt terribly because you have so much faith in the American system. The Dred Scott decision. Dred Scott versus Sanford. Okay. This is from the 19, this, I'm sorry, this is from the 1856 uh, December term. I remember having this document some years ago. Uh, from the, and this is, a, is, this is a, um, a discussion that involves the Constitution of the United States. Y'all listen to what I'm saying? Constitution of the United States. This argument was put before as a reference to what the Constitution actually meant when it came to the 12 tribes of Israel. Put it up on the screen. Okay, you got it. That's what I'm talking about right there. We're going to start with point number four. Listen to this here. Dred Scott versus Sanford, point number four. A free Negro of the African race whose ancestors were brought to this country and sold as slaves is not a citizen within the meaning of the Constitution of the United States. Hold it. This was said in a court. 
is not a citizen according to the Constitution of the United States. Go ahead. When the Constitution was adopted. Meaning back in, in 1771, 76. Go ahead. They were not regarded in any of the they, states. They, meaning the black people, the so-called Negroes, whose ancestors were brought over here in slavery. When, now, now, Northern Kingdom might think this expels them. We're going to deal with you, too. Read, read that again. When the Constitution was adopted, what? They were not the regarded. Israelites, the Israelites were not regarded. In any of the states as members of the community which constituted the state. Damn. Go ahead. And were not numbered among and our people were not numbered. Go ahead. Among its people or citizens. Do y'all hear this? This is the reason why when the brother Kyrie was saying, Well, what about the three hundred million of my ancestors that was destroyed? They basically said, Shut up, nigga. They did they act like he didn't even say it. Because this is what they're thinking about. Dribble the ball, nigga. That's their attitude. Throw the ball. Kick the ball. Jump. Jump. Sing. Sing. That's how they, that's how they deal with us. Because of what, they read, what, what we're reading here. Read that again. Like I said, I know some, this is going to get you. <laughs> I know this hurt. I might, not, I might have to cut the class down after this. I ain't even get to the. I ain't even get to my. But I'm going to get. I'm, I'm going to get it in. Read. <laughs> when the Constitution was adopted, they were not regarded in any of the states as members of the community. They which, were not regarded in any of the states as members of the community. Read. Which constituted the state. Come on. And were not numbered among its people or citizens. Read. Consequently. And because of that, the special rights. And immunities guaranteed to citizens. Guaranteed to white citizens. That's what he's saying. The, the special privileges and the and the special and immunities. Immunities. Meaning that I'm gonna give Amazon can make a film. And he's clearly exonerated, no questions at all. Amazon is bigger than Kyrie Gir uh, what's his name? Kyrie Irving. Amazon is all over the planet. They made the video. They didn't even receive no backlash at all. Because why? Because white people have immunities. Kyrie does not. Read that statement again. Consequently, Cons the special rights and immunities. Because we are not people. Because we are not numbered among the people or s as citizens. Because of that, the special rights that white folks get and the immunities that white folks get. Guaranteed to citizens, do not apply to them. Do not apply to Kyrie and yay. Do not apply to anybody that's not white. Go ahead. And not being citizens within the meaning of the Constitution, they are not. Hold on. And not being citizens within the meaning of the Constitution. Wow. Go ahead. They are not entitled to sue. You can't sue. That's why. When you go to court, that's the reason why you lose case after case. They believe in this. My baby was shot. My, my father's, my mother's were raped. And I try to get some, this guy shot my wife down, shot my son down, shot my daughter down. And they didn't do nothing. When I go to court, not guilty. Go ahead. They are not entitled to sue in that character in a court of the United States. Read. And the circuit court. And even if you try to take it out of that main courtroom, take it to a circuit court. Go ahead. Has not jurisdiction in such a suit. You can't get no justice regardless of where you go. Go ahead. The only two clauses in the Constitution which point to this race treatment. Meaning us. Which points to the only two clauses that refers to us. Is what? This race, treat them as persons. This is the, these are the two clauses. This is what it says. Listen good, and you can see that that's exactly how they deal with our people. The only two clauses that deal with us is like what? Read it. The only two clauses in the Constitution which points to this race, treat, race, them, treat them as persons whom it is morally lawful to deal in as articles of property and to hold as slaves. That's in the Constitution. They still believe in this. You wonder why you can't get no damn justice. Because they believe in this. Regardless of whatever amendments, it's going to cover all of that. 
When they came up with the other amendments, all of the amendments don't mean a damn thing to you. The 13th Amendment was supposed to free you. What they did, they used that to lock your ass up. Read. Seven. Since the adoption of the Constitution of the United States. Since the Constitution was adopted, since the adoption of the Constitution of the United States. Listen. No state can no be. No state. Go can, ahead. Can by any subsequent law. By any law that comes after that. Well, let's talk about your civil rights. Anything that came after the adoption of the Constitution don't mean a damn thing. That's what they're saying. Read that again. Since the adoption of the Constitution. Of Since the, the adoption of the Constitution was formed. Come on. Of the United States. No state can by any subsequent law make a foreigner or any other description of persons. That's Hispanics citizens. and everybody else. So guess what? You didn't get away either. Cannot make you any, cannot make you a citizen of the United States. Come on. Citizens of the United States, nor entitled That's the them. reason why they're talking about building a wall. Y'all don't, don't know where all this rhetoric comes from. They believe in this. How the hell are you going to call the Native American Indians an alien when you're on that damn land? How the hell are you going to call my, my so-called Mexican brothers, how the hell are you going to call them an alien when you're on our land? Read. Nor entitled them to the rights and privileges secured to citizens by that instrument. The regular citizens have their rights secured by the Constitution. We don't. Read. A. A state, by its laws passed since the adoption of the Constitution. What is the laws passed since the adoption of the Constitution? Civil rights, the Bill of Rights, all of these things that came out in the uh, 64, uh, Plessy versus, versus Ferguson. All these, different, all these different laws and different things that happened in the civil rights movement. None of this changes what the Constitution really means. Read it again. A, a state, state by, its, by laws, its laws passed since the adoption of the Constitution may put a foreigner or any other description of persons upon a footing with its own citizens. So there's nothing that you can do to be, to be viewed as equal with so-called white citizens. Read. As to all the rights and privileges enjoyed by them. There are other citizens enjoyed. They don't have, they have no idea what it's like to live like us. You, you, they drive 80, 90 miles an hour and they, they curse the cops out. You can't do that. The white man was pulled over. You remember the video I saw? He jumped out the car. What the hell are you doing? The guy, the guy, he said, you better read the tag. You better register that tag. Jumped out the car. He got pulled over. The trooper pulled his ass over. He said, what the hell are you doing? You stopping me for blowing my horn? <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't even want to step in the mud puddle. He drove a little further and stepped out and came there. You better check the plate. You better check the registration, the registration on his plate, buddy, and you better do it soon. Talking to the cops like that. They went click, click, click. Oh. They came back to him. <laughs> Have a good day, judge. Boom. Man. That was the end of that. They don't treat black judges that way. There was a black detective that was driving. Remember that? We showed that too. They stopped him and asked, where the hell you go? What the hell you mean where I'm going? Don't you see my uniform? They was like, no, we don't see that. All we see is nigger. Man. Read. A state. They, they, they talking about some civil rights changes. You a fool you believe that. Read. A state, by its laws passed since the adoption of the Constitution, may put a foreigner or any other description of persons upon a footing with So they might give other citizens some rights. That's what they're saying here. Come on. With its own citizens. Go ahead. As to all the rights and privileges enjoyed by them Go ahead. within its dominion and by its laws. But that will not <laughs> make him a citizen but of the United States. that will States. not make him a citizen of the United States. What did the first line in verse in the fourth stanza say? Yeah. Go to the fourth just a second so we can so we can recalibrate our brains. Point four. What did it say? Point four. A free Negro of the African race whose ancestors were brought to this country and sold as slaves is not a citizen within the meaning of the Constitution of the United States. Now jump back down. We just have to recalibrate because I know some of us be like, well, maybe they try to wiggle. No, no, no. They mean what they say here. Go back to where you was at, uh, point eight. 
But, but that will not make him a citizen of the United States. That will not make him a citizen even if they brought them over to this country. So our brothers and sisters that come over on some visas and all that other stuff, like even foreign exchange students that might come from overseas and all that want to come and learn, them, they still treat them like garbage. Go ahead. That's what it's talking about. Nor entitle him to sue in its courts, nor to any of the privileges and immunities of a citizen of another state. Damn. Do y'all see this? That's the reality. I've got, I bet a bunch, a lot of sisters are so brokenhearted right now because they were so in love with the white man. Oh, I love him so much. He said, none of you. Go ahead, read. Nine. The change in public opinion this and the, feeling. Hold, 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 hold. The change in public opinion and feeling. Go ahead. In relation to the African race. In relation to us, the 12 tribes of Israel. We already talked about us, the rest of the tribes as well. Go ahead. Which has taken place since the adoption of the Constitution. Which has taken place. Any change that came after the adoption of the Constitution, which was in 1776. Any change that came after that. Go ahead. Cannot change its construction whoa, and meaning. Whoa, 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 The Constitution cannot change its construction and meaning. Read. And it must be construed it and administered. It must be understood exactly how it's written. That's what it means. It must be construed. Go ahead. And administered now. And it must be administered, applied. Now, according to its true meaning according and intention, to its true meaning and intention when and it was intention formed, intention and intention when it was what? When it was formed when it and was adopted, formed and framed and adopted. You know what that means? It's going to carry on. That's what it means. It's never going to change till Christ come. I know everybody quiet now. They say, you was reading that Bible, but you ain't had my attention until you read that the white man really don't like us. Now you got me. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Get back to the scriptures. Whoa. Brothers and sisters, we got to get out of this trap. Um, I have a lot here. I don't want to skip nothing. Um, I don't want to do no part two either. I already got another class that I'm supposed to be doing a part two on, which I ain't got to that yet. So that's that. That'll be two part twos. I can't do that. But uh, but I don't want to skip nothing. So it's like a part two to a class that I did some weeks ago, and now this will be a part two on here. I heard Deacon Malachi said, so I guess I could do that too, right? He called for a part two, so I, c I guess I could do that, right? <laughs> Bring <Okay>. it out. <laughs> uh, so let me stay on track. This is our journey, brothers and sisters. This is what we have to realize don't feel upset because the so-called white man don't want you that's the reason why the lord said that you are his beloved you know never forget that now we have to turn to our father that's where it should have always been we should always remember that this is not our rest give me that micah 2 micah 2 micah 2 and 10 micah 2 and 10 micah chapter 2 and verse 10 arise ye and depart for this is not your rest. For this is not our rest. Go ahead. Because it is polluted. This country is polluted. Our captivities are polluted. You, it, are, not to, you are not to intertwine with this because the Lord is going to destroy it. Go ahead. It shall destroy you. It shall destroy you. It will corrupt your mind. Go ahead. Even with a sore destruction. Even with a sore destruction, because at the end of the deal, we're going to get destroyed if, like the scripture said, come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins. If we don't learn that, we're going to be destroyed with this place. The hell, what the hell you want to save this place for? We have to live in it, yes. We'll abide by the laws to so, you know, how you see how they talk about us. But we're going to do what the Lord said. The Lord said, obey the powers that be. But we're not doing that just because. We're doing that because we want God want to send Christ to get the hell out of it and let this damn place burn the hell up. That's what we want. I don't want no salvation for my enemies. I want death. That's what they want for me. Right. What the hell I look like. Why would I be less than a man to not want death for my enemies when my enemies want death for me? Bring it out. 
Let's get our journey. Matthew 17. Matthew 17. Before we get out of here and go home, brothers and sisters, we have to repent. Get ourselves together. Repent and endure through the last bits of this captivity. Okay? So that's where we're at. We're in the last bits of it. I want to make sure I get these pieces in here right now. Come on. Matthew 17, verse 13. Matthew chapter 17 and verse 13. Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the uh, Baptist. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Matthew 17, verse 13. Am I reading it right? Matthew 17 and verse 13. Matthew chapter 17 and verse 13. Then the disciples understood. Okay, I'm, I, I put something down wrong. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, Matthew 11, no. What did that say? And all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And if you will receive this, this is Elijah. That's what I'm looking for. Huh? I've got my notes all screwed up. You got me? Verse, verse 11, 10 and 11. Is 11 and 13? Yes, it's 11 and 13. Yes, 11 and 13. I put the wrong scripture down. 11 and 13. Sorry, brothers. Read Matthew 11 and, and uh, 13. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 13. For all the prophets. Yes, that's it. I got it marked wrong. Lord have mercy. For all, for all the prophets in the law prophesied unto John. For all of the whole Bible prophesied about the nation of Israel all the way up to John the Baptist, about us going through the old covenant, our sins, our history, all of that prophesied about what was going to happen to us, about us going into captivity, about us losing our kingdom, losing our heritage, losing it all. All of those prophecies was before John the Baptist came up. Read. And if ye will receive it. And if you will, re and if you disciples will receive this understanding, come on. This is Elias. This is Elijah. That's Elijah. That's a Greek way of spelling Elijah. This is Elijah. Go ahead. Which was for to come. Which was told that he should come back. Go ahead. He that have ears to hear, let him hear. He that can understand what I'm talking about, let him understand. What is he saying? That the spirit of Elijah was going to come back in the last days to bring us back to our father. That's what he's talking about. This is the regeneration of the spirit of truth in the last days. Give me the book of Malachi chapter 4 verse 1. So what does all of this mean? What does all of this mean? Malachi chapter 4 verse 1. Malachi chapter Malachi chapter 4 verse 1. Malachi chapter 4 and verse 1. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. For, the, the, for behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. There's going to be a day on this earth that's going to feel like you're inside an oven. What, can, what, 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 what can produce that? Nuclear holocaust. Nuclear fire. Read. For behold, the day cometh. Don't repeat it. Just keep reading. Yay. And, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. Go ahead. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts. Go ahead. That it shall leave them neither root nor branch. That it shall leave them neither root nor branch. What is this talking about? When that fire burn up this place. What are we really talking about? Give me the book of Revelation chapter 7. I'm going to mix it up a little bit because I know time is running down. And I'm going to come back to this when I, Lord willing, I'm going to uh, continue this as I'm going down, because I didn't even get to the subject matter about they once tried to tell us. I talked about it a little bit, but I actually want to go into some deeper details about that. Uh, re uh, what did I ask for? Seven and, seven and one. Read. Revelation chapter 7 and verse so 1. This is correlating what we just read in, in uh, Malachi chapter 4, verse 1. Everybody's with me? Read. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. Holding the four winds of the earth. These four angels are holding back the superpowers that have nuclear weapons. I want you to understand what we're reading. The angels are holding back the war of destruction. Go ahead. That the wind should not blow the on the earth. The wind is talking about nuclear destruction. It ain't talking about regular wind. Regular wind blow every day. Go ahead. Nor on the sea. Nor on the sea. Nor on any tree. Nor on any tree. That's what we just read in this verse here in Malachi. Read that statement again. That the wind should not blow. 
The wind shall not blow on the earth, nor on the sea. No, so it shall not blow on the earth, meaning where the where the troops went, where the where the people will be, that the destruction shall not hit the hit land. What? Or nor, what? Nor on the sea. Or where the battleships, where the armies at, shall not hit the seas either. Go ahead. Nor on any tree. Nor on any tree, because when that fire comes, it's gonna burn these trees up. That's what we just read over here. Go back to Malachi four. Malachi chapter 4, verse 1. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. That's what's going to make the land and the sea and all of that. With that wind of destruction. So that shall burn as an oven. Go back to Revelation. I'm coming back here. Go back to Revelation. I just want to tie those two scriptures together. Revelation and continue reading. Revelation chapter 7, verse 2. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. I want you all to listen good to this part here so you can understand how important you are. And, he, and so while he saw the first, he said, what was the top of that again? Read it. Read and I it. saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. That's the second verse. What's the top verse again? And, and after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. So the four angels is holding back the four kingdoms that got nuclear destructive power. That's what John saw. He saw the four angels holding the destruction, not allowing them to press the button to the, to the weapons that they already have built. Nuclear destruction, that's what we're talking about. The angels is holding it so they, don't, so they do not yet press the button. Read. Holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow that on the, the earth. That the destruction should not blow in the earth. That's no. to cause this fire that we just read in Malachi. Go ahead. Nor on the sea. Nor on the sea where the battleships are, with the military. Go ahead. Nor on any tree. Nor on any tree. Like it said in Malachi, it said that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. Go ahead. And I saw another angel. So after he saw these four angels, he saw something else. He said, I saw another angel. Ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. Having the seal of the living God. What is that talking about? The commandments. You're the valley of the dry bones. You're the Israelites. The commandments is coming to you to wake you up. That's what the seal is. Give me that in the Bible. You got it? Yes, sir. Then let's find out what it's talking about. Having the seal of the living God. What is the seal? Listen. Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 16. Bind up the testimony. Seal the law among my disciples. Seal the law among the 12 tribes of Israel. In other words, cause them to repent. That they bethink themselves and repent to the Most High. That's what it's talking about. Go back to where you was at. Revelation chapter 7 and verse 2. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. Having the seal of the living God, which are the commandments. Go ahead. And he cried with a loud voice. And to the this angel, the same angel, cried with a loud voice. Listen. To the four angels. So this one angel came to where these four angels was already holding the destruction. Keep picture it in your mind. You got four angels holding back the destruction, and then another angel come and said, what? To whom it was given to hurt the earth. So these angels that's holding these areas, their job was to hurt the earth. Read that again. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. So what was their job? To hurt the earth and the sea. That was what the job of those four angels was to do, was to make them press the button so to literally hurt the earth with destruction. But this one angel said, don't do it yet. Read it. Saying, hurt not the earth. Hurt not the earth. Neither the sea. Neither the sea. In other words, do not fire the missiles yet. Go ahead. Nor the trees. Nor the trees. Go ahead. Till we until, have. Until. 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 We have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. When the 12 tribes of Israel wake up, that's when the Lord is going to say, press it. When 144,000 leaders wake up, because the one third is going to be included in that. When that last 144th person wake up, that means the one third is already sealed. That's women, children. That's the Israelites. When that happens, then it's going to say, release the button. Hit it. So guess what? It's no, it's no mystery why they don't want us to teach. It's no mystery why they don't want this truth to go out. Because when it, that's why the scriptures literally says that in Matthew. He said, when this gospel reaches all over to be a witness unto all nations, then shall the end come. Because that's when the 12 tribes are going to be raising up. Once they wake up, the Christ says, now let it loose. Read that. Where you at? Revelation chapter 7 and verse 4. 
And I heard the number of them which were sealed. And there were sealed 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. So that's what has to happen. So how are they going to wake up? They got to be taught. That's what our job is. They got to be taught. That's why they don't want this taught. Because every time this word goes out, brothers and sisters are repenting. And God has already programmed them to build their own weapons. They already got them built. So they can't get out of this. When the Israelites fully wake up, when that last person wake up, he's going to make them press the button to destroy each other. That's how great you are. So literally, it's us that's holding this thing back. That's the reason why there's so much opposition to this truth getting out. So we realize that we're public, num we're public enemy number one for real because we got this Bible. Okay. Now, uh, I'm going to move around. Give me, uh, nope, let's go back to Malachi. Let's, 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 let's finish up my statement. Then we're going to close it out. I know Bishop is coming up soon. Malachi chapter 4. Malachi chapter 4 and verse 1. Because we was reading about John the Baptist, okay, which is, Eli which is making a point about Elijah. If you, it says, and if you will receive this, this Elijah is John the Baptist. That's what it's talking about. Go ahead. We're going to read that. Read. Malachi chapter 4 and verse 1. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. That day is going to come when the 144,000 wake up, so you can understand what we just read in Revelation. Read. And all the proud. Yea, and all that do wickedly. Then all our people that did not repent, they're going to die. Go ahead. Shall be stubble. They shall be burned up. Go ahead. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts. That's because that wind, that destruction that's written in Revelation, this is what it's talking about. Read on. That it shall leave them neither root nor branch. And it shall burn up the, tr the trees, the sea, all that going to be on fire. Read. But unto you that fear my name. But unto you Israelites that repent. Go ahead. Shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings. Read. And ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. Read on. And ye shall tread down the wicked. The most High going to give us power to rule over our enemies. Read. For they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. These so-called Jews going to be ashes upon our feet. Read on. In the day that I shall do this, save the Lord of hosts. The Most High is going to beautify the meek with salvation. Read. Remember ye the law of Moses, but my servant. But before we get to what we just read, we got to remember something. Before we get to this glorious, this glorious message that we just read in the third verse, in the second and the third verse, we got to go through this here. Read verse 4. Come on. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb, for all Israel was with the statues and judgments. So the Most High said for us to remember the laws, the commandments, the laws of Moses, because that's what was written during this time. Read on. Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. That, so he said he have to send the spirit of Elijah again before the destructive power that we just read about in the first verse. That's the reason why you find out your Israel, this spirit already came here. Read. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children. That's what, you're, that's what you're learning. And he, the prophet, shall turn your minds. He said he shall turn the hearts of the fathers. What is the heart of our fathers? The Bible. The book of your fathers. We shall turn this Bible back to the children. Read. And the heart of the children to their fathers. And he's going to turn your mind back to what? Their fathers. And he's going to turn your mind back to the Bible. Go ahead. Lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. I have to do this before I tell the angels to let those four kingdoms shoot their weapons. That's the earth. That's the curse that he's talking about. You see why these people don't want to play with us? Because we tear their ass up in this Bible. They better stay the hell away from us. Now, uh, so everything that I'm going to bring out from here on out, is what happened after World War II. I'm going to jump down and get some points in. Give me Revelation. Um, I gotta, I'm, I'm going to skip around, and I'm going to come back to this later. I'm going to come back to this later. I'm going to get, I'm skipping into my letter. I want to read one more scripture, and then we're done. I mean, for tonight. We're done for tonight. Um, one second. Uh the verse that speaks about the woes, the second woe, the 
two woes is no, no, no. It's it's the same chapter. Revelation eight. Well, I was in the right one. Revelation eight. Revelation eight. Revelation eleven. I'm sorry. Revelation eleven and and uh, and ten. That's what I want. Revelation eleven and ten. Revelations chapter eleven and verse ten. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them. So this from the eighth verse it says that the twelve tribes of Israel, which are referred to as the dead, it says, and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, which is where America is. There's a spiritual Sodom and there's a spiritual Egypt. We serve bondage here, that's what Egypt means, and this is a spiritual Sodom because lesbians, homos, and every damn thing else is here. And we're in the middle of it, drowning in it. And the Lord, and then the scriptures say, where well, also our Lord was crucified because they lied about Christ with these churches that are really precincts for, for, for dead brain. Okay. Uh, and then verse 10 again. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them. Shall rejoice over the destruction of our people. That's what I just read in the Constitution. They rejoice on how they got us. Go ahead. And make merry. And they make merry. They send gifts one to another and rejoicing and laughing at us, watching us run up and down the gridiron and act the fool in the ghetto, selling dope to each other. They love that. Go ahead. And shall send gifts one to another. Come on. Because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. Because they know how we rule. When we rule, we rule this earth right. And they didn't like that. Read on. And after three days and a half. And that's the 350 that I talked about earlier. The 12, what was it? There was It said the 1260. If you do the math on all that, it all equal 3.5. 42 months is three and a half years. 40, uh, 1260 days is three and a half years, and it also correlates with a time plus times, which is one plus two, and then a dividing of times is two plus one is three and a half. It's all talking about the same period. Read. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them. The spirit of life from God entered into them. I got to play a video. Martin Luther King, let me just play that real quick. Martin Luther King. This is why they, he tried to tell us. He tried to tell us, not only him, Malcolm, and rappers. I have all this information lined up here, and I ain't going to get it out today, but I can at least get this. Play it. After three days and a half, come on, turn it up, listen. All we say to America is be true to what you said on paper. What paper is he talking about? Did he just read the paper? But it's all right. That's my brother. Listen, keep playing. Keep playing. If I lived in China or even Russia or any totalitarian country, maybe I could understand some of these illegal injunctions. Illegal injunctions maybe meaning I that they put, they, they just, they just, uh, what's the word? Have like draconian laws. They just come against us to just shut us down for nothing. A hate group. That's an, uh, that's an example. Uh, they call us a hate group. We ain't advocating nothing, no violence on nobody, but they will create and manufacture a label. Go ahead. I could understand the denial of certain basic First Amendment privileges because they haven't committed themselves to that. They have not that. committed themselves to First Amendment privileges. Why? Because we just read it. Read. But somewhere I read of the freedom of assembly, somewhere I read, of the freedom of speech, somewhere I read, of the freedom of press, somewhere I read, that the greatness of America is the right to protest far right. But that's, that special immunities and those things do not apply to us. That's the reason why they treat us the way they treat us. Play on. We aren't going to let any injunction turn us around. Well, I don't know what will happen now. We've got some difficult days ahead. But it really doesn't matter with me now. Because I've been to the mountaintop. Pause it. When he said he'd been to the mountaintop, De Deacon Malachi went over. I was like, where did he get? Because I was going to play this. I was, I was laughing with the brothers. But that's all right. 
When he say he's been to the mountaintop, you want to know what he's really saying? He knows that we're the Jews. He, he understands that. When these rappers and so forth, when they make it high, they really get to see how wicked this system really is. And then they try to come back and tell us about it. And they say, you better not say nothing because we got you under contract. If you go outside of that, we'll kill you. And that's why Martin is talking the way he's talking. He said, it doesn't matter with me. Now, he, he was looking death in the face. He was looking death in the face. You know they killed him the very next day. Play it. to live a long life, longevity has its place, but I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will, and he's allowed me to go up to the mountain. And what did you see, Martin? Keep, keep playing. And I've looked over, and I've seen the promised land. I've seen it through the Israelites. Go ahead. I may not get there with you, but I want you to know the night that we as a people will get to the promised land. So I'm happy tonight. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. That was on April 3rd, 1968. I was alive then. They killed him April 4th. Play on. The very next day, that was the assassination. You're not allowed to say that. You're not allowed to bring this truth out. This is a CBS News special report. Dan Rather reporting for CBS News from New York. The Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. was shot to death by an assassin late today as he stood on a balcony in Memphis, Tennessee. Okay, that's it. Dr. We ain't got to play no more. So jump down to the, uh, the verse uh, where we was reading at. Revelations what? chapter 11 and verse 11. Read. And after three days and a half, Come on. the spirit of life from God entered into them. Read. And they stood upon their feet. And they stood upon their feet. That's what they don't want. They don't want you waking up, black man. They don't want you to wake up, Hispanic. You so-called Hispanics. You're the 12 tribes of Israel. They don't want that. And they use terrorist acts like kill your assass assassinate your leaders right in front of you. Set them up. Lie on them. Just to terrorize you to say, well, I ain't going to do that. And that's exactly what they did to these ball players. They basically tarred and feathered them and say, look, the rest of you niggas, look. You do step out a line and you try to do what he did, we're going to do you the same way. And they, and they say, well, let me get the other Negroes to try to warn him. And that's why you got, what's this, what's the dude, uh, Shaq? What's the other one, Barkley? All of them Negroes that said, listen, man, we, yo, they're going to come after you. Repent, they basically tell them, repent to the white man. That's what they're saying. Please. Because you're going to make us all get in trouble. Because they might think that we might follow you. They start looking at all of us. That's what's going on. That's terrorism. That's repression. Read. And they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw That's them. That's what's going on now. They are afraid because when this truth come out, they finished. So-called Jews, all of them, they're done. Read. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud. That's when we're going to come up and the bombs are going to be hitting this place at the same time. This correlates with Psalms 91. 10,000 shall fall at thy side and another thousand shall fall at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked because we're going to see them getting destroyed as we're being taken up. Come up hither. Read. And their enemies beheld them. And our enemies going to see us going up and they're going to be dying at the same time. All praises. Read. In the same hour was there a great earthquake. And in the same hour there was a great earthquake. It's going to take one hour to destroy this whole garbage. Go ahead. And the tenth part of the city fell. The ten horns, America. 
And in the earthquake were slain of men, 7,000. So it's t- meaning 7,000 on that side. Just what you just talked about, just like I just talked about in Psalms 91, this is what this correlated with. Read. And the remnant were affright. Uh, and, and the remnant were affrighted, meaning we're going to be terrified when we see it because it's going to be so much power going on around us. Read. And gave glory to the God of heaven. Read on. The second woe is past. This is the verse I've been trying to get to. The second world war is already past. So what are, what are we talking about here? It's letting you know what time period that we're in. The second world war has already passed. Read on. Behold, the third woe cometh quickly. The third woe cometh when? Quickly. That's the one where the bombs are coming. So we ain't playing. This ain't no bullshit we reading. The second war is already passed, so we're in the time of the second world. The second world war is already past us. So what is God talking about? He's telling you exactly where you are in time. Right. So with that, we say shalom. What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. 